Okay guys, so what you are about to witness is perhaps the most deranged, off the rails, and insane debate that I have been a part of yet. It was over on Modern Day Debate, and less than an hour after the debate uh, happened, MDD had to take it down. That, that'll tell you right there. It was wild. Um, the debate was supposed to be about whether or not the moon landing was fake or real, but uh, yeah, both of our partners were two flat earthers, so of course they wanted to make the whole debate about gravity and the shape of the earth, even though it's supposed to be about the moon landing, comes with the territory, but uh, one of them kept making certain anti-Semitic slurs that I will not and cannot repeat here. So I took the liberty of blurring those out and keeping the debate as is and just, <laughs> it's a long one because more than half of it was Q&A, but, uh, but yeah, I felt like it was worth having the whole thing up because it is, uh, <laughs> it's a wild ride, guys. There's a whole lot of subjects that are covered, I guess would be the word <laughs> in this in this debate. I mean, he, uh, this Dustin guy basically brings up every single topic that I've ever debated, uh, from evolution to the origin of the universe, to the logical arguments for God, to the shape of the earth, to gravity, to cosmology, everything. He brings up everything I, we've, I've ever talked about on this channel on a debate that's supposed to be about the moon landing. So, uh, yeah, without any further ado, guys, here it is. Good evening, and welcome to Modern Day Debate. Tonight, we're going to be debating, was the moon landing a hoax? And to start us out, we have Dustin. So, Dustin, the floor is all yours, and thank you for being here. Okay, thank you so much for having me on. Um, I am going to mention, I sort of crammed for this particular moon landing topic at the last minute. I'm generally more into cosmology, so um, we, we, we'll, we'll also, we will touch on some of that tonight, hopefully not go too much off topic. Anyway, with my intro, um, I'm Dustin Emos, uh, also called the archivist. Um, I've seen many things, things of good and evil. And have I got answers possibly to some of the deepest and most profound questions laid before mankind? You may choose to place the burden of proof on our shoulders tonight and say, why do you doubt the official science of world governments? But then I would reply, why do you believe it? This belief is fairly recent and completely hinges on unproven theories such as space. <clears throat> It's hard to believe the moon landing was real. What NASA is claiming is essentially that they have gone a thousand times further than they can go today with 50-year-old technology on the first attempt with one one millionth the computing power of what is in your modern cell phone. There's now clear evidence of NASA using numerous methods to mislead the public about astronauts being on the ISS and other space missions, air bubbles, wires, harnesses, green screens, virtual reality, strings, gravity, grabbing objects that are not even there, near drowning incidents, etc. Space is a satanic secret society deception. The elite are ruled by a cult that worships the demigod Nephilim or Anunnaki lineage of the fallen angels of Genesis 6. They have created entire branches of false science around the Copernican revolution, the now thoroughly debunked theory that the world moves around the sun, which is why we're really here. In order to convince us that the world is a globular rock cannonball corkscrewing amidst infinite void <clears throat> with infinite other globular rocks and dust shotgunning behind, a rock that is billions of years old, merry-go-rounding around a burning giant fart that itself shoots through space at incredible speeds without flinging us off through velocity or momentum while maintaining absolute clockwork precision. And we can find lucky moments of absolute stillness without so much as a breeze. In truth, the demonstrably biblical earth is young, stationary, geocentric, flat, hollow, and domed. And they are spending vast quantities of your tax dollars to make damn sure, pun intended, that you don't find out. NASA are liars, and the deep state science backing their theories are just as much based on scientific method as cigarettes for pregnant women and May iron sharpen iron, and may the best arguments win. All glory to Yahweh. Jesus is king. I stand witness as a former devout, lifelong anti-God, uh, anti-theist, atheist, 
who never lost a single debate with any theist in my life. That, as someone who tested biblical earth, I converted to scientific fundamentalist Jesus freak instantly upon testing of various religious holy texts. Only the Hebrew Bible has 100% accurate, synchronized prophecies in fine detail by the hundreds or thousands, hundreds or thousands of years apart, every single time. I stand corrected and humbled eternally, having been a know-it-all before. And in my time, I have woken up tens of thousands of others to Christ and to Yahweh and to biblical earth using the actual scientific method to prove biblical earth precisely as God told us. I witness there is no more powerful tool in a modern Bible scholar's toolkit than biblical flat earth and the seed war to wake people up to the truth of God, Yahweh, our creator, and who wrote, who also wrote his name on every cell of our body. How am I doing on time? Uh, so you still have uh, two minutes and 30 seconds, but I would ask if we could just try Perfect. to uh, hone in on the, uh, on the topic of tonight's debate. Uh, I know that this all uh, ties together, uh, and we'll get into that for the open discussion, but uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put your timer back on and, and jump out I thought, here. I thought this was just the intro. My bad. <clears throat> um, the moon's translucent. You can't land on it. Everything's flat. Um, there's actually zero evidence for space. It's not CGI. Uh, it all has like sex written on the globe, marble, stuff like that. Uh, we can basically go down any rabbit hole you guys want to go to. That's my intro. Okay. All right. Well, we'll uh, end the screen share there. Pop back over to our main debate st uh, stage. Thank you so much, Dustin, for your uh, introductory statement there. Uh, we're going to hand it over to Flatzoid. Uh, you have up to six minutes here to uh, present your intro case. Yeah, so I'm just trying to keep my screen up quickly. Uh, there we oh. go. Is it showing? Uh, yes. So uh, you are on a phone. I'll let our audience know that uh, yeah. Flatsoid had to switch to his phone. So if it's it's a little strange, uh, I'm going to try to fix it up for you guys. Uh, I don't know if I can share it. Uh, it doesn't work. Okay. It's gonna... uh, why the moon landings never happened? Well, I didn't really have time to set up a presentation. I just took one of my old ones I have done before. Obviously not on Yahoo before, but it's just basic arguments that I hope we do get into that the Globers are going to be able to um, defend for the moon landings. Anyway, the first argument is arguments against the moon landings. According to the second law of thermodynamics, if the Earth is considered an open system, the air on Earth would seek to fill the available space presented to it. Uh, this is the second law of thermodynamics, and because of it, the moon landings would be violating this natural law because, as I said, the Earth would be uh, the Earth would release all the air into the available system, and we would be dead, and we wouldn't be able to build the space rockets to go there. So, again, if the Earth is considered a closed system because you need the gas to stay on Earth, it will not let the people leave the closed system, aka they cannot leave Earth to go through this uh, closed barrier to get to the moon. So that would be an argument why the moon landing can't be real. Now, the other argument is, are the astronauts lying? The first one, what did the astronauts see? Let's take Donald Petit, for instance. This is based on the stars. Donald Petit claims to have seen stars, nebula, and so forth from space. And then we look at different ones where do these stories actually collaborate with each other? Arguments against the moon landing again, Mike Massimino also claims with Donald Petit to have seen the stars, nebula, and so forth coming from space. But let's move to the most famous, Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong claims it's pitch black, that you see no stars. How is it that Neil Armstrong sees no stars, but yet Mike Massimano and Don Petit are able to see stars and nebulas and everything, and they both claim to go to the same place? Or how about Buzz Aldrin? He claims space is just a deep black with a velvet sheen to it. Also not really collaborating with the others. Remember, Buzz and Neil went together, and yet they have different stories on what they saw. Or how about Chris Hatfield? Also claims space to be deep velvet with a velvet sheen to it. And Michael Collins, my favorite. He says he can't remember to see any stars. Later on, he writes a book where he says he did see stars. How do you not remember seeing stars or not? And then later says, no, you definitely saw stars. So the argument would be, why would they all contradict one another's observations if they really did go where they claim to go? Stars or no stars? Which ones is it? The next one would be the Van Allen radiation belts. They would have to have traveled through it if we had to beg the question of Narnia. And the Hasselblad cameras would have huge implications based on this. Uh, films exposed these are, uh, 
the Apollo detectives did actual uh, quote unquote experiments trying to figure out what would happen in a vacuum and radiation with the um, the film. And obviously it gave a lot of problems. It gave different hues, it did exposure to radiation as it did and messed up everything. Uh, films ex just showing that quickly, see how it changes the coloration and the color balances and the hues and everything. And then obviously, uh, why aren't the astronauts able to just swear on the Bible to say they went there? Obviously, because they never. Then Gary Fong, if you haven't known, he's a well-accepted professional Hasselblad photographer. He also says it's impossible for the Hasselblad to have ever worked in that environment. The next argument is, how do you change a film in a dust environment? Now, remember, this dust is so fine, apparently, on the moon that it gets in every crevice, even on the very tight sealed um, astronaut suit. Why is it able not to get into the Hasselblad camera, which is really not as sealed as the suit? Okay, and then obviously the form in the vacuum, and that's exactly about it. So how do we know we went to the moon? Simple. It violates natural law. They always contradict each other and themselves, and no one, none of the equipment would even magically work if you did go to Narnia. And that's my presentation. Alrighty, well, thank you so much for your introductory statement, uh, Vlad Soid, and uh, from our, our hoax side. So uh, over to the not a hoax side, and I'm going to ask uh, Grayson to go first. Uh, so, uh, Grayson, the floor is all yours. Uh, we had worked it out for Ozian to go first, actually. Yeah. Oh, see, I, I thought where Ozian got here, and Ozian's actually coming in with a, a little bit of... Uh, uh, he, he was uh, he has a cold, and uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to uh, come on out. So, Ozian, uh, you volunteered to go first. I, I figured I'd put it on you, Grayson, to uh, get some service thoughts out there to maybe give Ozian a little break. But uh, all right, Ozian, floor is yours, buddy. Thank you. I just want to point out, like, there was a comment there that was very racist and disrespectful towards Jews, and I, I don't think we should have these type of discussions when we're talking about if we went to the moon or not. So let's avoid that going forward. Thank you very much. Today, we're diving into the persistent moon landing conspiracy theories which claim the U.S. government fabricated the Apollo moon landings in the 60s and 70s. Special thanks to Modern Day Debate, my debate partner, Base Theory, and our opponents, Flat Soy and Dustin. I, I'm also hosting an after show on my channel with actually Ryan called Matters Now, so hopefully you can join us there after this is over. So it is, in, it is impossible to cover all the details of this colossal endeavor in a mere six minutes, so I will go over the highlights and we can discuss them during the open discussion. Hopefully we don't turn this into a debate if gravity exists or not, or the shape of the earth, if it's hollow or domed or whatnot. And we can talk about if it's physically possible to go to the moon or not. And if we have historical documentations to support that. And by golly, we are still sending landers, landers to the moon in 2023. So the level of incredulity required to deny it reaches absurd proportions. So we have gone back to the moon. To affirm a historical event, we must demonstrate it's physically possible and validate it with primary and secondary sources. Skeptics view the moon landing as a grand hoax, critiquing old film footage and questioning the physics of the flags and shadows and things like that, and apparently the testimony of witnesses. However, they often overlook the determination of President Kennedy, who committed to landing a man on the moon, a goal realized by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on July 20th, 1969. Humanity's journey to the moon is a marvel. NASA's Saturn V rocket, central to the Apollo missions, was a feat of engineering at 110 meters tall, equipped with a powerful F-1 engine. Its launch and the subsequent stages were intricately planned. This involved orbiting Earth to properly align for the lunar journey, then meticulously maneuvering the command service module and lunar excursion model module for the moon landing. Michael Collins, who was in the CSM, played a vital role orbiting close to the moon. The, and they couldn't see stars from the moon because of sunlight, because either on the sun side of the moon. So the lunar module essential for the moon surface landing underwent extensive testing ensuring its functionality. The descent to the moon was a carefully executed process with the astronauts navigating to a safe landing spot on an uncharted surface, a true pioneering endeavor. The development of spacesuits by NASA was crucial for moon exploration. These suits were designed 
specifically for the moon's challenging environment, debunking the notion of them being mere fabrications. Actually, they um, created two types of suits because the people that went to the moon's surface didn't need, needed better suits than the one in the command service module. So instead of just making one, they made two. This design was sophisticated, capable of maintaining a one quarter atmospheric pressure difference, equivalent to going below water three meters in the lunar vacuum and safeguarding the astronauts from the dangers of space. Radiation protection during the Apollo missions was meticulously planned. The spacecraft's trajectory and shielding were designed to minimize exposure to radiation in the Van Allen belts. The astronauts' average radiation exposure was remarkably low, an average of 0.8 rad, about like an X-ray, reflecting the careful planning and execution of the mission. To protect the astronauts from radiation, the Apollo missions meticulously planned their trajectory to um, avoid as much of the Van Allen belts as, po as possible and the charged particle radiation and use shielding on the spacecraft to navigate the belts. Aluminum blocked the charged proton ionized radiation while the insulation, like this plastic, corrugated plastic, I believe, countered the charged electron, electron ionized radiation. These belts consist of charged particles of protons and electrons captured by the Earth's magnetic field and propelled by solar winds, not waves. If the hole had been made of lead, like some people said it should have been, the interact be interaction between the charged particles and lead would have produced X-rays, which would have been dangerous to the astronauts. So that's why they didn't use lead. Comprehensive scientific evidence and expert analysis robustly dispute the moon landing hoax theory. The Apollo missions represented an extraordinary achievement in human history, a culmination of extensive research, experimentation, and innovation. The overwhelming evidence, including photos, videos, phone calls, scientific data support this. The 2.5 seconds to send messages to the moon supports the speed of light. This evidence is further reinforced by firsthand accounts from astronauts, um, naval veterans, my former shipmates, well, not mine, because I was in the Navy when they were, and records from scientists and engineers involved in the missions. This extensive documentation could withstand scrutiny in a court of law. The notion of a vast, enduring conspiracy to conceal such a monumental event is highly implausible. Accepting the moon landing as historical truth, corroborated by significant evidence, and global lunar exploration efforts is a logical conclusion. And I'll conclude it with that. Thank you. A1, thank you for that, Ozian. Sorry for laughing. I can hear the parrot in the background. And uh, yeah, it, 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 yeah. I can't, is, is it a girl or a boy? Mary, a Ma girl. Well, Mary's got a lot to say. Uh, so yeah. over to you, Grayson, <laughs> uh, for your up to six minute uh, intro there. Uh, thanks for being here. All right, perfect. Yeah, my name is Grayson from the channel Based Theory. I do debates on all kinds of pseudoscience topics all the time. Check it out. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the moon landing, whether or not it was fake. So my partner just kind of ran through the historical evidence. I'm going to be talking about since most people that think that the moon landing was fake, they have a problem with NASA. They won't listen to anything that NASA says. So I'm going to be focusing on third party independent sources that validate the moon landing that are not NASA. So first of all, let's just put our th critical thinking caps on. Let's think rationally about this, right? What was the context for the moon landing? Well, we were in the middle of a cold war with the USSR, both of which were vying for various realms of influence throughout the world. So it was in the geopolitical interest of the USSR, if America faked the moon landing, they would have had the technology and the budgets to verify that and provide evidence that that happened. And it would have been in their geopolitical interest to do so. They would be shouting it from the rooftops. They would be trying to expose America for having done what would have been the most elaborate hoax of all time. I mean, this was this would be truly a remarkable endeavor if the U.S. had been able to pull off such fakery. And the USSR, through signal tracing, radio telescopes, uh, like there are so many different ways that they could have provided evidence that this was faked if it had been fake. The fact that we have not a single nation on Earth 
has ever came out and said that the moon landing was fake. Not just the USSR, but China, India, Japan, North Korea, a Iran, any enemies of America that would benefit geopolitically by exposing the U.S. as having faked such a thing, none of them are saying anything. So you basically have to bite the bullet and say, if the moon landing was fake, so was the Cold War, and so are the illusions of different governments, which I have a feeling that both of our opponents here tonight will probably bite that bullet and say that really all the countries are just fake. They're all in cahoots together. They're all trying to fake space and fake the shape of the earth and blah, 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 blah. But for normal people with critical thinking skills, I don't think that that's a bullet that many people would be willing to bite, that the Cold War was just fake and that really the U.S. and the Soviet Union were working together the whole time and there was no animosity. So with that, I would just like to share my screen uh, very briefly and just go through uh, this PowerPoint here. So was the moon landing fake? First of all, here is a published paper from the USSR in 1978, where they used a radio telescope to actually bounce signals off of the scientific equipment that was left behind by the astronauts of the Apollo program. This was published within the Soviet Union just for internal consumption within the Soviet Union. So again, they just, have to be in cahoots. Just one then second there, Grayson. I have to zoom out your screen share just because we had to zoom in so much for the phone share. Okay. There we go. All right. Let me know on. Whenever you... Okay. So that was a Soviet paper. Here we go. Here's an amateur third party. This is a guy from Kentucky, right? This is on the week of the moon landing uh, in July 1969. This guy, Larry Basinger from Louisville, Kentucky, they wrote about it in the Louisville Courier, the local newspaper, about he how he was able to point his uh, little device that he had that he had made to measure this and he was able to point it directly at the moon and intercept the exact same transmissions that was playing on everybody's TV and he was disappointed that they were the same and he didn't get to pick up any juicy bits that they had edited out it was the exact same according to Basinger who's an amateur who did this there's also this guy, uh, Sven Graham, who did pretty much the same thing for the Apollo 17 the, the last mission to the moon um, that was manned and he had, you can he see here his data there on the left uh, on the sheets that he was filling out in 1972. And you can see that plotting here, the Apollo 17 Doppler analysis showing that it matches the Doppler, what, what it should be for the moon surface. But this wasn't just done back in the day. Here we go is this is just from a couple months ago. Uh, doing the same kind of analysis, a Doppler analysis on the most recent Chandrayaan-3 mission to the moon. This guy, Scott Tilly, who's an amateur astronomer, uh, did this himself with his own equipment. He has a blog here, like Riddles in the Sky, where he breaks down exactly how he did this analysis, all the equipment that he used, so you can do it too. And right here, he has his data uh, doing a Doppler analysis exactly matches what it should be if that signal was coming from the moon. So this is pretty much proof beyond a shadow of reasonable doubt. But if you wanted a final nail in the coffin, here is a retro reflector that the Apollo astronauts left on the moon. And they scientists today can shoot a powerful laser at it, precisely targeted at it within a centimeter accuracy. And you can see that it's called lunar laser ranging. It's still done to this day in observatories all over the world, not just in the US, but in China, in Russia, in France. There's observatories all over the place. They routine, routinely do these lunar laser ranging measurements and they literally hit these devices. And you know that they have to be hitting these devices because the signal that they get back from them is not just from hitting the moon surface, that's called an EME, and the type of signal that you get from hitting specifically these retro reflectors is completely different and cannot be replicated without this specific piece of technology physically being on the moon left behind by the astronauts. And with that, I will end my presentation. All right. Thank you so much for uh, your opening statements, everybody. Oh, now I got to fix this screen. Look at that. See, everything <laughs> just wants to. Uh... Have fun. All right, so that was our introductory statements, everybody. We're going to go into an open discussion. Just want to remind everybody hanging out in the live chat to hit the like button, uh, share this out in those spaces that you like having these discussions. Uh, we are a neutral platform. We host debates on science, politics, and religion. We hope everybody feels welcome in this space. 
Uh, let me turn up my preamp a little bit because that's not going to be important in two seconds. So we're going to go into open discussion. And thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Uh, let's kick it over to you, Dustin Flatsoid, respond to some of what you just heard. Do you want to start off, Dustin? Um, I could address things like radiation shielding and light angles blocking stars and gravity. And uh, uh, if you want me to go first, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, first, uh, to rebut, uh, rebut in order, uh, Ozian. Um, first, I'm not racist. I, I, I just want to say that I'm married to a Chinese lady. I have three wonderful mixed babies, Mongols. Um, I simply speak to those behind the lie just like those behind the jab, just like also incidentally those behind Soviet You Russia. didn't just say and jab, though. You said jab. something that could be racially offensive, yes. Oh. Also behind Let's... Soviet Russia and Rome's learning. Dude, I'm, I'm not going to deal with this yeah, shit. Yeah, like, let's, 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 off the topics of racist <laughs> let's shit. Go, oh, come on. Let's go same back people, to the moon. Same people it. behind the fake globe. And incidentally, I mean, it's... A well, let's go to radiation. Relevant. What do you think the radiation is that they experience in the Van Allen belts? <laughs> Okay, so uh, the radiation, as I understand it, and I'm pull up my article here. Um, I got to get back to it. If you just look at the thing, like if you actually look at I the, know what it looks like, the moon yeah. lander, and I'll pull up an image for people to, to see. What's a type of radiation? Do you know it? it it's charged particle radiation, right? I, it's I just, not well, a wave. I'll get to I'll get to a quote from his uh, from like BBC or History dot com or whatever in a second. Mm -hmm. I just want people to look at this and just very carefully look at what we should assume is radi is radiation shielding, and this stuff is basically is. Pa paper thin and buckling everywhere. Um, it, it's it's flimsy and fake. Uh, it basically looks like paper mache and tin foil. Uh, there's also, incidentally, there's no exhaust burn hole or crater. There's no windows. Um, there's no stars. And we'll get to the stars in a second. Um, okay. Now, in terms of radiation, the Van Allen radiation belts, according to BBC, quote, some people don't believe in the space shuttle and the missions to the moon because they think the journey itself was impossible because of something called the Van Allen radiation belts. The Van Allen uh, belts are huge belts of radiation that surround the Earth. Yada, yada. Get to the end here. Radiation sickness occurs when you have been exposed to around 200 to 1,000 rads of radiation within a few hours. They claim that NASA made sure that the spacecraft was well insulated, so actually the average dose of radiation over the 12-day mission was similar to a chest X-ray. Yes. 0.18 rads. So... Again, the average back, exposure between all the missions was 0 0.8 rats. Look at that leaky piece of, uh, that leaky bucket full of holes and go back and assume that, you know. But you understand you that the radiation, that's radiation shielding. The radiation, it's not effective. It, you it's busted. They would have died. The radi radiation wasn't waves. It was charged particles, right? So waves are reproduced. Well, the shielding those, was busted the, is the point. The, the shielding was aluminum and it was, they had insulation in the um, aircraft so the insulation oh what did i say so there's there's a uh, electron charged particles and proton charged particles one and the uh, um the aluminum blocks if it had been made of lead it would actually produce x rays so they're not rays so they don't pass through the material the particles have to be um will interact with that material and most so of those if, particles if the shielding, get you're, you're saying that if the shielding the is busted it would still work the shielding's not busted. I don't know what you're talking about. There's no busted that, shielding. I in can that. zoom back in. But I, anyway, in answer to the light uh, angle question, your your argument and basically uh, history.com's argument is essentially that the light of the sun is blocking the dimmer lights behind yeah. it. And this yeah, can you here, go out during noon? That. When you go out there during new noon time, can you see the stars? Often, yes, to various degrees. <laughs> okay <laughs> depending right. on where you're at so yes. most people would and, say and in, no and you fact, can't see the stars and in fact uh well it depends on where you are in the time of year in fact you can see the moon that time of day sometimes yes. uh, in point of fact you can see various uh angles in a country setting with light at various settings right here you can always to some degree see even with uh light in your face or light all over the soil much more than you might see in the Moonlander setting, which is what we're sort of comparing to here. The Moonlander's light was uh, at a at a very very uh, deep, uh, even. It was uh, angle, brighter. Basically. You understand the, the the sunlight was brighter to people on the moon than it would be to somebody here on Earth, right? But where's the stars when it's actually much less bright than the pictures I just showed you? Where Wait, they're no, bright. that's you can see the them. sunlight is brighter there than it is to us on the Earth. 
but first of all, they're not looking at the sun. Secondly, we also they're, just saw where the light was brighter on They're on the side on of the Earth. moon facing the sun. The sun but, is above them. And the camera's facing okay. away from the sun. Okay, yes. but, but So there's no okay, real I'll, reason I'll, to I'll not see the stars. Yeah, let's let let's let Flat Sweat in here, guys. So we're kind Go of ahead, taking the ball no, back. I was going to ask Ozzy a question though. Um, based on atmosphere, does it make light brighter let's or dimmer? Let's end the share there. It will occlude part of the light. The atmosphere will. So it magnifies it. It just refracts it. In other words, it still magnifies it. Uh, so it, it would doesn't be magnify less bright. It it would be less bright. Yeah. So why is it brighter than if there's apparently no atmosphere? more of the um, lumens get to you. So more of the light gets to you. It's not blocked and scattered by the atmosphere as mm -hmm. it comes to you. Okay. But anyway, I, I just want to ask, because I wanted to, to find out now, you guys were saying that uh, the paper mache is able to block this radiation and things. Aluminum. Is the radiation coming from all angles when they're moving through the radiation belts or is it just coming at one angle? They're charged particles. I'm not sure how they're moving around. But... It's looping. So it, it's looping within the Earth's magnetic field. Like the, the charged particles are moving in a, in a loop. Yeah. And did they have this... Um, to, to help them out, it, it shapes some, somewhat like a figure eight. Yeah, and uh, did they have this cocoon of, um, as you guys put it, protection right around them or just on panels? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, the whole ship, their module was shielded where the people were, were shielded from the um, charged particle radiation, right? So they weren't radiation waves. You understand the difference, right? So this, they were this char kind of, doesn't make a difference. This yes, it does. Waves or particles doesn't make a difference. It does. This, this is kind of similar for most all of Flatsoy's criticisms other than the stars thing was that he just doesn't think that the engineers were good enough. Like he thinks that- I didn't even bring up stars now. This is a total non sequitur. We're I'm not about bringing up stars, man. The shielding. I'm paying attention to what I'm actually saying here. What I'm saying is, uh, uh, and Ryan, can you not share the screen for a second while I'm talking? But uh, yeah, no, he's we... making my point with the share screen. Well, can we? Can he's we... making my point there. <laughs> can we stop? I know the share I'm making while... a point right now. I haven't made one point so far. Yeah. I'm trying to make a point if I could be allowed to make that point. Please. Let's end the my screen share, is... you guys. Don't mind. Yeah, like nobody can see us talk whenever the screen shares. It's just all on the screen. Okay, thank, thank you. you. My point has been that all of Flatsoid's criticisms, besides the stars thing, notice I'm not talking about that Flatsoid, beside the stars thing, all of the points have just been that the engineering is not good enough. This is what he talked about with the camera. They couldn't engineer the camera to be protected from radiation. They couldn't engineer the film to like keep the dust away. They couldn't engineer like the module to protect the astronauts from live. radiation. All of his criticisms are just that they couldn't have possibly engineered that because he doesn't okay, provide. Can it. you show me? Can you show me the shielding on the camera? He says that because the camera that they used was apparently just a commercial camera, and he, all of the experience that he shows are just the com the commercial brand of the camera. The camera was inside the module. The module is shielded. There's no like radiation on the surface. Of the moon is well, there's solar radiation that you get some from the sun, but it'd be like having a walking down the street with a camera. If you leave it on the sunlight for too long, it can, I believe, mess up the film eventually, but that would take a long time. Okay, and on the moon, do you have do you have any of the protection from the atmosphere from the gamma rays coming from the sun? Well, Primarily, the protection would be from the magnetic field, which, no, they, they, you wouldn't have that on the moon. I get it. There's more radiation on the moon's Ooh. surface. That's why they had to take proper precautions in their engineering. And I don't see why and you're can you explain it's impossible what, to engineer for that. Would you explain how they uh, took precautions for that, please? Uh, the you, casing you think of the they device. Didn't? The casing of the device provides enough shielding. I, I don't see how that's did you, a big Did you deal. see what the Hasselblad is made out of? At some point, I want to address uh, or rebut Grayson. Just give, yeah, just yeah. Have a second. Last point there, and then we'll pick it over to you, Dustin. Okay, yeah. I just want to know the composition of what the Hasselblad camera is made out of. Can you show anywhere there where it is shielded from the gamma rays from the sun and uh, keeping the dust out camera and changing the lenses would be impossible due to that fine particle. Gamma of dust. radiation, you know and you mean UV radiation. What ra there. you mean UV? If you know how a film camera works, it would be impossible 
to be able we, to change the form. In you said that gamma radiation One second, from OZ. the sun. We got to let him wrap up his question there, and then you definitely, I'll give you a chance to respond. But yeah, uh, let's wrap up your question there, Flatsoid, because Dustin's been waiting. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, just going to say, you would have, it would be impossible due to the mechanics of the camera, because it was a film camera, to be able to take the film out, stick a new cartridge in, and not have the dust everywhere, and the vacuum causing the the issues with the film and because of the radiation, thanks to the sun. I do want to address that, but I don't know if we're going to Dustin or what. Uh, if you, but, yeah, if you can do that in like 10 seconds. Yeah, okay, we'll so on. the camera that they used was not just an off-the-shelf Hasselblad camera. I mean, all your experiments were just off the shelves, commercially available cameras. It was modified by Mass NASA. It's not just a commercial camera. And to prevent it from dust, first of all, dust doesn't just flitter around on the on the moon's surface, right? There's very little atmosphere. It just falls back down. It's not floating around on little like air currents like it does here on Earth. Right. So you don't. Again, that's that addresses it. All right, thank you. You don't need any uh, more protection from the radiation right. that you do on the hey, earth. Come on, Hold on <laughs> we, we gotta hand it back over to Dust and give him a chance to ask his question. And I think uh what you just said will spur more conversation. I don't think Flatsoid's gonna forget what you just said. So uh over to you, Dustin. I don't want to spend too much time on uh gravity itself, but even Newton did not believe in gravity, and he actually thought it was so great an absurdity that nobody would believe it who had basically a thinking mind. Uh the quote is here. Um, quickly to rebut um, all governments being in on it. Well, they are literally. There's an Antarctic Treaty, which is where they started to all get in on it. But it really, excuse me, it really came before that um, because uh, this is a 500 year old lie. It goes back to Copernicus, Galileo, Newton, and these other seancists. And uh, it goes back to learning against learning, which is Cardinal Woolsey's strategy, which is papal approved, to create fake science and flood the world with it in response to people reading the Bible for the first time for themselves, which was basically what we call the Reformation. Um, it's not perfect, but I'm just, this is history. Uh, Rome failed to overthrow the Reformation with a military fleet with Spain invading the UK. And basically people started to read the Bible and break away from Rome. And they wanted to break faith in the Bible using fake science in order to reclaim and maintain their power and world dominance. And that's where we get fake science. That's where we get evolution. That's where we get um, uh, the heliocentric model, the globe earth, all of it. And in terms of uh, documents, we have tons of documents. We have CIA, Russia, NASA, U.S. Army documents all referring to a motionless flat Earth as the foundation of their science to make it work. Um, we talk about gravity, like like we're covering lots of topics. Like, And it, you mentioned an experiment that people could do also. Um, I think uh, Grayson mentioned uh, one experiment that anyone can actually do is just moon presents cold light, test the shadows at night um, versus the light at night. The shadows are actually warmer than the cold light of the moon, which proves it's not reflecting sunlight. It is its own light. I'd like to address that. Proven by lunar eclipses sure. where the sun is still visible, in fact. So um, All right. I, I don't mind. I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate what I'm talking about while you address it, please. Well, yeah, let's, okay. Right, let's can we go over gravity first? And then we'll like, come back to it in a second. Like first, I want to address the cold moonlight if I can. Yeah, uh, we should cover both. Okay, just right. on the thing of the cold moonlight, it's pretty easily debunked that it, it, it's literally just that you're near things that reflect thermal radiation. If you get away from things, like if you were to cast like sh shade from the moon very, very far away from like where you wouldn't have any kind of thermal radiation like being reflected, then you wouldn't observe that effect. And if you just want to make extra certain, do this yourself, Justin, measure this. On, on a full moon, look at the shade versus not shade of moonlight, measure the difference, and then come back on a new moon at the exact same locations, mark exactly where you made those measurements, and you will find the same difference on a new moon with not with no moonlight. So there you go. You can do it in a parking lot where there's nothing nearby that would maintain a difference in thermal mass, and it would be pretty How much How would you get the shadow? For, where would the uh, shadow come from? You'd have to bring your own shadow in order to test the theory. Which and there you go. That's use an umbrella. The there thermal. you go. Yeah. If you can use an umbrella, you're going to get the same effect. It's got to be like literally 20, 30 feet away. Are you going to do that? Do it. Do it with that. And then you will see what the An umbrella would work. If you hold an umbrella, it would work. Well, you're standing you next to it, too. It. You, can hold, you can measure it. And then while you're measuring it, stick the umbrella in front of it and see a difference. Like a yeah, beach because style. You're, you're bringing it in. It's reflecting thermal radiation. The umbrella is too close. So to it's your, not. All right, just one so second, guys. We got to let Grayson have a chance to respond. Just one second for that. Right. So you cut I'm him off in you. the middle of a sentence. 
redo this on a new moon with the exact same setup, you will get the same results. It's because it's it's bouncing back thermal radiation from your little umbrella or whatever you're using to create the shade. It's pretty obvious. It's been done where they've cast shade with something that's like 30 feet away and you don't measure any difference. There's no such thing as cold moonlight. Okay, can, can I just say something about that? So you're saying it only gives off uh, radiation when you got shade there? It only no. So then wait, what I just said was the, the complete shade opposite of that. Platzoid, okay. what I just said was the complete opposite. So I don't know how you got what I was saying was literally the opposite of what I said. Because the radiation you understand comes from the ground up. Yeah, thermal radiation can be reflected by large objects that are casting shade. Yeah. So, so if I, I want to make if I measure shade. something, I if I measure reason. the radiation, the temperature, and I've stick something in the way that the light change and it changes the temperature. Yeah. You're saying it still radiates the same or different. No, I'm saying that what you've stuck in the way is literally reflecting thermal radiation causing to heat up. What you need to do is cast that shade from way far away so that there's no chance that it can reflect thermal radiation, which I've never seen a flat but earth do. The thermal radiation comes down up, dude. It bounces down from the ground upwards. If you're sticking something in the way, that's not going to cause you from getting a different reading. What you've stuck in the way is bouncing that thermal radiation back. Okay, you can radiate thermal radiation in you know 360 how, degrees. You know how the thermometer works? It points that way. It doesn't pick up behind it. What are you talking about, dude? It heats up the air. Directionality. As the radiation reflects back down, it's going to heat up that air below. I don't but see we, what anyway, we are anyway, so what's the against. topic of moon. I, I want to, can I get back to quickly the Hasselback camera? No, I, I want to go back to the statement about... about Isaac Newton that was false. So we, we covered something that was false about Sir Isaac Newton. So before I we move it. on. Yeah. That's okay. Fine. So, Sir, carry on. so Sir, Sir Isaac Newton believed gravity was true. He just thought there was some supernatural force that was causing that interaction. And then other people thought it was some type of ether, ether or whatever that was causing that, allowing that attraction to happen through some type of medium. So he believed gravity was true. He just thought it was some type of supernatural force. Now, do you know who C.B. Boyes is? C.B. No. He's the one that introduced Newtonian gravity after Newton died because Newton did what not okay. to, did not want to be ascribed to it. All right. It sure. says right here he believes in gravity. He just thought it was he, immaterial. He, he also wrote like thousands, maybe, maybe hundreds of thousands of pages on alchemy. And uh, I'm pretty sure he yeah. died drinking mercury. Uh, well, yep. That's all true. It doesn't invalidate anything that he said about gravity. He says well, gravity it goes to motive he and says agenda. Right here, no, which it I'd says love right to here. talk to. He says gravity must be caused by an agent acting constantly according to certain laws. So he thought gravity was true. He just thought it was caused by an agent. That's what he's saying in your own quote. That but they posted. can't show an agent. They cannot demonstrate an agent. That, that's fine. It's but an invisible power gravity, that is still a sort of a gravity was real. So he still believed people. gravity was real. He just thought it was caused by an agent. Well, he, he admitted no. here that you have to have an agent to, to have gravity, and there's no such agent. It's a debunked theory. And he did not want it um, published until Ooh. after his death for a reason. Can we quit yeah. this? You see, the now? thing is, okay. You see, the thing oh. is, he, he knew because say, you... gravity is not a debunked theory at all. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, first of all, you would agree F equals MA holds true. In certain non-relativistic like settings. No, if you always require force or mass to accelerate. That is you natural. Also, F equals MA does okay. not hold true for light. You need to use a different formula. So okay. no. What is light? Which is like a minute or two. What is light? Are we really getting into a debate about what is light, flat soy? This is supposed to be about the You're moon. saying F equals M doesn't work with light, so what is light? Yeah, it's, an elect it's an excitation of the electromagnetic field that's quantized. Uh, We're on uh, the moon landing sub subject. There, right there's, a oh, pure, there's a foundation of false science that can all be picked apart, such as uh, gravity, heliocentrism, movement curve. We could go a lot of ways, and it's all built, built on sand, I think is the point. I would like one minute at some point to address some of the things we've we talked about like gravity. Yeah. Sure. If you want to go ahead yeah. right now and, and expound some ideas, but uh, if, if you wanted to get into, I think you had mentioned before we started, uh, there was the some camera. 
historical stuff that you wanted to talk about as well? Uh, oh, yeah, there, there's, a, there's an there's agenda. There's a Canadian coming out. Yeah, uh, go ahead. There, there, there is an agenda behind it. And this occult overlay to Newton is not a one over. It's pretty much the, the theme. It's the pattern. Uh, Rome has a, a bunch of occult uh, seances that are inventing her uh, so-called science and actually comes from things like uh, Hermes Emerald Tablets, which he's obsessed with and uh, oh. and translated. He actually read in there, quote, it's and it's talking about the sun here, its force is above all force for it vanquishes every subtle thing and penetrates every solid thing. It's just paganism trying to replace what had been been, been understood by every other religion on earth, uh, including the Christian religion to be a flat central uh, geocentric, not moving, um, you know, right. young earth. I am going to ask us to pull it back in and try to focus on uh, the moon landing, because I know we are getting a little sidetracked on uh, some of the other topics that we do discuss on Modern Day Debate, and we'll certainly arrange those debates uh, in the future uh, if you guys are interested. Uh, but for now, awesome. uh, let's try to uh, focus on uh, on what I'm... happened in the 60s and uh, all the things that I'm... were surrounding that. So if you guys can, uh, yeah, let's try to focus. Flat, so over to you. Okay, yeah. So, uh, would you guys say you'll be able to uh, demonstrate us your moon landings violating the second law of thermodynamics? It doesn't. It does. What's the second law of thermodynamics? That entropy inc increases in an isolated yes. system. The universe is an isolated system. You, there's other systems inside the isolated system. We don't know. So, an open universe... system and closed system is part of thermodynamics. We but don't know. Is, second law. We don't know if the universe yeah. is a closed system. We just treat it as one. But an isolated yeah. system yeah. is a, a isolated system is just a hypothetical. You do not actually have an isolated system in reality. Yeah, and now, the second law, okay. guess what? Only applies to an isolated system. Thanks False. for debunking yourself, Latsoid. False. Go look. I can show you citations from MIT, from every university in reality that shows every single system we uses thermodynamics. All right. I've taken thermodynamics. The first thing you learn about the second law is that it only applies to isolated systems. Okay. What about Joule's expansion of free gas? Do you know what that is? It's not on the topic. Makes it more of a rule. Uh, oh, right. you just said you studied thermodynamics. Joule's yeah, expansion of free expansion of gas is part topic, of thermodynamics. Right. We're supposed to be talking about the moon landing. You're trying yeah, to which change debunks the, the moon subject. landing because you cannot listen. This debunks the moon landing because it's in Narnia that violates the second law of thermodynamics. In moon Narnia, landing is not in Narnia. It's it magical doesn't science. Violate. It, it actually supports it. It explains why we have a uh, gas pressure gradient as we go up in elevation. Scientism. Yeah. That's delta X, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I just want to say, do you know what delta X is? Change in Change. position. Great. So gas pressure gradient comes off the gas pressure, which first requires containment. You're already hoping we, to no. Why does we, gas pressure? If you got a tank, if, if you got a tank, can you measure the gas pressure difference from the top and the bottom of the tank? Can you measure it? What's the size measure? of the tank? Let's say it's um four feet tall. Is it enough of a right? You probably can't. You understand? You already literally made a point. A tank. You probably a can't. Okay, but can you measure the gas pressure difference on Earth as you go up in elevation? Uh, yeah, I wanted to bring that point up, is that if you actually graph the atmospheric pressure as you go up in altitude, it gets closer and closer to zero asymptotically. So when you're at space, it's not like you have this huge pressure differential. It's gradual. I mean, you guys would have the burden of proof if you say that's that it stops at some point. You would have the burden to proof to demonstrate that it does terminate okay. and does not just continuously asymptotically approach zero, which Again. is... Again, pressure gradients come after having the gas pressure, which is really needed the antecedent of containment. So you're hopping to pressure gradients, shows you don't understand. Gravity. Really gravity yeah. is the containment. That's what contains the atmosphere on the Earth is gravity. Why do we got to screen yeah. share about fucking opioids aluminum? Because, because they don't follow the scientific method and less than 1% of actual scientific journals actually use the scientific method. I will ask if this is the last screen so it goes share. To credibility. We've had a lot yeah, of screen 98% of statistics. I don't, are I don't get to talk much. I'm just trying to contribute. But um, ba basically, it goes to credibility of the so-called science, which most governments agree on most of this other bullshit here as well, or did at one point. So, I mean, it's all lies. It's all lies to your detriment. Okay, I'm not it's all lies I'm not by a liar. To do debates about tobacco, mercury, opioids, aluminum, talcum, 
So you're just dish galloping. Can we please stay on topic? So the debate is but about the credibility if the was of true, science. The, if, if, if your you'll credibility notice, is being harmed by not agree, staying to the topic you agreed to. So we're talking about notice, your credibility, Dustin. If you'll so. notice in my opening, I cited things from non-scientists, from amateurs that had done this themselves and verified for themselves that the moon landing happened. So that didn't involve any scientist. That was amateurs doing this for themselves. And you could too, if you were had the will to get this equipment, set it up for yourself and learn how to do it. All right, I'm going to inject a wild card, guys. Expert. Guys, I don't want to put you on mute. I don't want to put mine. you guys on mute. Just one second. I'm going to ask us to do something wild. Let's go back to 1969, Apollo 11. Let's, like I said, let's try to focus on that mission and uh, what exactly was going on with that. Uh, just, like I said, we'll try to focus this in a little bit more because we are getting a little can bit I, out here when we should be here. Can yeah, I give I a minute towards top, Can I actually answer why they did it for just like a minute? Sure. If it's, I, about, I would, if it's about that topic, that would be great. Yeah, let's try to get The agenda into... was to sell the whole cosmology to the masses uh, so that they would fall away from scripture, from the faith. It's actually called the great apostasy and prophecy. Um, oh, I'm sorry, wrong one. I need to find this particular one here. Um, anyway, the point is that... Um, scientism right here rome as i mentioned earlier was basically at war and they introduced learning against learning cardinal woolsey and these guys were all into the occult and that's when we get into all of these so-called scientists which are seances including copernicus including galileo who was a psyop he supposedly was a heretic but real heretics were burnt at the stake with their bible tied around their neck for daring to read or translate it they weren't given comfortable retirements and all of their math is filled with 666s six, six, everywhere. Um, it's it's just nonsense. Uh, House hocus arrest hocus. is comfortable retirement. Okay. You're gift yes. galloping. Who yeah. cares if Galileo was part of the CIA? Moon landing. Well, they faked it is, to make you not believe in God. That is comfortable retirement if you, if you consider are, it, you would be burnt at the stake. Most Christians, without, without these most five Christians or six people, believe nobody would believe landing. in this. These most are the six Christians, or so people who sold it to us. Most Christians believe in the moon landing. So you're just saying they're not true Christians? Uh, they're not reading the Bible. No. Oh, so mm -hmm. they're not true Christians. Uh, uh, wow. God, say, God says the but Bible another... is flat. So listen to this. Flat. All the Christians another... there, God if you the believe we went to the moon landing, he thinks you're a fake right. Christian. I just think right. you're not reading the Bible. Saying. He's saying you don't you're understand Jew, you? it well enough. You're, a Jew, you're not you? educated uh, well enough. Oh, he's acting like one. I'm what? Oh, so you're being racist again? You're being it's racist again. It's You're a, being racist again. Wow. It is yeah. a fact of science. Just want just want to defend myself. Okay. I, 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 want, I just want to defend you. myself. I'm a proud well, I was on Jew, mute. Yes, Stop everybody. It. It, <laughs> that is what we just were doing. We're going to get focused. about the J word. Seriously, yeah. shut up. We're on. We're trying to stay on subject. You want to talk about retro reflectors? Can I, can I finish? Okay. So anyway, yeah, I would like to have that flat earth Bible debate with, with Dustin sometime against someone. But for now, I'm, I'm still on the Hasselblad camera and still on gas pressure and still on the dust on the camera. First of all, like he's saying, they are their um, credibility is shot, so you can't accept that. I'm saying you don't have gas pressure out containment, so that's a shot. The Hasselblad would not work there, that is shot. The LM, we can even go on to that. Do you know how much times they tested the LM on Earth? Did they get it successfully to, to work once on Earth? The Lanny module? Um, I'm not familiar with the story no. of the um, Lanny module. Um, they did never once. They have successfully landed what six or seven of them now, at least on the moon. Like just the last year, point. they've la like landed them my point. on the moon. Your point is they're landing them on the moon in 2023. That's your no, point. No, right? no, no. My, my, my point is, point is Sorry, that the no. retro reflectors. I was still know. talking, Grayson. We're on a yeah. topic here, Te Te Grayson. I know, and I'm saying the that LM, I, not I'm, the retro I'm reflectors, what you said. The LM. Just let me finish talking um, here. Okay, the retro reflectors you, you, show 
That's Sorry, a mission. Moderator, he's taking away from my argument. I'm not, dude. I'm trying to address it. Let me finish this sentence. We're talking about the alim, not retroreflectors. Yeah, it's... I know. I'm talking Mike, about that, too. Mike, if you let me finish my sentence, Mike, you'll see. Well, I was still talking to Ozzy about the re Well, the alim, LM, the LM was designed for the gravity of the moon, too. So, go ahead. No, no, listen. They tested it on Earth. Not once did they get it right. The first time they got it right was on the moon. Yeah. Do you know how absurd that is? You don't even get people to do, be a pilot on a helicopter if they aren't able to land once. I think, they had, I think they had simulated That's modules. Awesome, they had simulated That's modules. Awesome. Okay, so you're saying that they for their lander that was designed to work in one-sixth Earth gravity that they weren't able to, to successfully do a test in six times the gravity it was designed to land in? Wow, shocker. The fact is that we can test the retro reflectors on the moon, yeah. and that tells us that the mission happened. Again, retro reflectors of, is not what we're talking about. We're talking about the lunar module now. Retro reflectors is nothing to do with the lunar module. They use a training okay? vehicle. So let, let me share a screen of the training ve vehicle. Do you do you know how they try to replicate one sixth gravity on the lunar module on Earth? But in water? No. Then how would you do that? They used rocketry and they used suspendal cables and they still couldn't get it right because it's just too unstable. Now you want to tell me they aren't able to get it once correct on Earth, but they can go to space, which violates the second law of thermodynamics, and land That's a lunar rocket perfectly the first time without any problems. And we know there. that they did that because the retro reflectors are there. We can verify that. Um, the Russians were able to reflect things off the moon before they even went to the moon. There's a oh. practice lunar module. That's what they practice with on Earth. I, I want to address yeah. one did they, get it, said, did they get it I want right? to address the point that he just said that yes. they were able to re reflect things off the, off the moon. There is a difference. One is an EME, an Earth, Moon, Earth transmission. It is a totally different temporal signature than an LLR, which has to go through the retro reflector. Okay, these signals are meaningfully different. And what, what, how, what's the difference between the two? Again, their temporal spread is completely different. What's like, temporal an, an spread? Amateur, an amateur can bounce a signal off of the moon itself, like off of the regolith of the moon, the moon surface. An amateur can do an EME. But a, an amateur cannot do an LLR because of the amount of precision and the power of the laser that it takes. They are different. I'm still waiting. What is a temporal difference? I want to know what that is. I don't. The temporal don't spread is like basically if you have a really long spread out signal versus a very short, very exact signal that's like maybe one so to the ten. Wavelength. So the wavelength. So the wavelength. The the width like of the, the wavelength. The time of the time spread of the signal. So is it the wavelength that changes or the, the time it takes to travel? The time it takes to, like, the, the, the time that you are receiving the signal. Like, you're receiving it for a few seconds versus, like, a few microseconds. Uh, like, okay. the actual signature of the signal is different. Like, the Fourier transforms give, di like, a different breakdown. Relevant Fourier to transform. modern training modules, what you guys are talking about, training modules. I just wanted to share. That's it. Yeah, go ahead. Well, even today, I mean, they, even recently, uh, the 1960s, uh, the flight director admitted that they had such good simulation technology that no one could tell the difference, even the pilots. So uh, when we're talking about the so-called like simulation and technology they used to train with, I mean, this includes stuff that they can't tell the difference between the real and the fake anyway. But how can you fake the retro reflectors? I, I, again, he's talking about the LM. I think the <laughs> astronauts would be able to tell that they were on the moon. So be they able would. To tell. Yeah. And that's why they got caught in so many lies and conflicting stories. Well, they didn't lie. So that's uh, the claim. Uh, who, who told lie. the truth? I suppose they can't you all be telling their, the truth. Supposedly you can read their mind. No, you pointed out lies about seeing stars. We already covered why you could see, like, if I, you're. If, we I just want to say, that. I like the velvet version of fake reality. The velvet space velvet is kind of cool. So yeah. you you ask a can, question can, like how can we I could believe this stuff, how anybody could believe we went to the moon, but you believe in all this other stuff that you can't demonstrate at can all, except you? using the Bible. But anyways, 
Can I ask you a question? Is that fine? Um, yeah. You said they never lied. It was caught on camera footage where they doctored so-called 130,000 miles away from Earth, where they're holding a partition in front of a window, and you can see the astronaut going between the camera <laughs> and the Earth, where they literally just took high altitude footage and tried to make it look like the whole Earth. I'd have to see they, the exact. This, in the, this is actual you, footage. Do you in know this, the example, Grayson, that he's talking about? I don't know what he's talking about. Now. Wait a second, I, guys. I would need to see. Like you could get, you could cover, you can make up conspiracy theories. Just make them up. Make them up, and we don't have any way to refute them. So we have no way to refute. Three days out. It was supposed to be three days out. I only studied the actual evidence. So if you're going to point out like these conspiracy other conspiracies. You would have to like present the evidence for it, so I can. And none of that could possibly explain the retro reflectors that are, are on the moon, or the fact that Again. they measured the scientific equipment left behind by the Apollo, like the Soviets did. Not you guys even are, you're, you're believing some Soviet lies, um, probably. And yes. secondly, that that experiment nobody's going to go through trying Not to lies. do. Now, mine is easy to do. Grab a thermometer, check the shadows, you'll be all right. Uh, on the other hand, already. on the other hand, I, I can't agree also with the camera angle because most people aren't going to. I think it's a weak angle. We have some stronger things to focus on, just just respectfully flattenoid. Um, and and basically, in terms of cosmology science, I'm happy to go into any of those rabbit holes, including the history. But in terms of the moon stuff, like I said, I'm, I, I kind of cram study this one today specifically. I'm a little rusty on my uh, my moon landing stuff. However, um, I can debunk NASA's credibility. I can debunk science's credibility. I can go through multiple branches of science and debunk them. I can even show you where it came from, and, and I can follow the lineage. Dustin, that's why Martin in my opening, papers. I specifically highlighted non-NASA, non-scientist amateurs verifying that the moon landings happen. We have a lot of those, too. And and they, we, they can show that there's no curve when they go up as high as possible. Why aren't you publishing um, papers, then, that, that, that refutes all of science, dude? I have that a would whole be archive. Amazing. It's Martin called thesarapayum.com. You have Martin a blog, you dude. Them. So how did you do your testing? Have an archive. How did you verify it? What was your independent dependent variable? What it's like did you do that? Oh, what was science. your HO and H1? What were all these things for the paper that you published? It was in science. You never science, science, right? We, we don't so trust fake science because less than one percent of those so actual you weren't papers even doing science, use just the scientific method. So they don't use science. It up based We're on using actual science. Your, they actually admit that they don't use then real what science. What was your independent dependent variable? Oh, what was he's not doing are, are that you, that you, Did you take your fifth blog. booster yet? What? All he does is have a booster blog. Yet. Okay, okay, okay racist. Once Thank again, you. let's move on. I'm married We're to not... a Chinese woman. I'm not racist. I'm honest. Oh and certain God, people don't like that. That doesn't make you not racist. But certain people don't like that. Can I ask a scientific question? I wonder why. Kanye was right. You Can I ask a scientific question? I'll, I'll let Platzoid ask his question. Yeah, okay. This is for you, Ozan and Grayson. Can you show us the science for the moon landings, please? The sci I covered like the engineering required to do to engineering is not science. Uh, I understand that, but it requires the fundamental physics behind it to be able to do the engineering to go to the moon. So you have to be more specific. What exactly? Like you want to talk about how they went to the Van Allen belt? How they orbital mechanics? That's not science. Um, yeah, radiation. Uh, understanding radiation requires science. It requires okay, scientific method observe to phenomena, understand please. it. What's that? Natural observe phenomena, please. Step one. National observe phenomenon, like we went to the moon. So to me, it's, not, this, it, to me it's an phenomenon. historical argument anyway. So it. It, the question is, is it physically possible that we went to the moon? The, the answer no. is yes. The, no, it's the, not. The, it the violates question the too, second law of thermodynamics. Oh, it doesn't. It does not. You just don't understand the second law of thermodynamics. Again, do you know what the Joule's expansion of free gas is? It's partially translucent. It's a plasma, a light so, source. So you we're talking land about second it. law of thermodynamics, right? There we go. <laughs> This shows that you can see the moon and the okay, sky we're behind not it. it about that right now, Dustin. <laughs> well, you can't land on something that's not solid. Right, but mm -hmm. we're not talking about that, right? We can we can talk. You about can that. swim in it. It looks pretty <laughs> solid to me. It it all looks pretty solid. Then it why does it like change looking, colors it's with like the night when, sky? It's like when I look well, at atmosphere. A, a, if I look at a skyscraper in the distance, depending on the atmospheric conditions, look at the skyscraper, it can change colors. It can become occluded by fog. But but I believe this thinking skyscraper exists. I can walk up and touch it just like we walked up and or flew you, up you can't and touch see it. the moon. 
but you okay. can't lose it over the curve after four or five miles, which the mass says you should be able to. No, you don't understand that there is an atmosphere okay. that can refract light. Well, you can refract okay, but light, guys, but even even so, even on non, non foggy, screen, foggy or non foggy nights, it's equal. You can see the color behind. Oh, them. Okay, screen okay. Sharing. Your specific That's... claim was about the. Moon. They don't like evidence, man. No, your specific like... claim was about right, the moon changing the colors and, trying to get and being there. occluded by fog and stuff like that. We Some can look like at buildings. Either. Why can we look at buildings in the distance and see the same type of phenomenon, but we don't okay. call the buildings fake, do we? Dustin, what you showed was not evidence. That's that's it just wasn't. It was pictures of the moon at various times of days, which is evidence. We're it's talking about the moon. It's it's, it's not. It, it doesn't reach a conclusion. A okay, I think I think we're getting about this all wrong. You have to provide evidence that the moon is a physical rock orbiting in a natural yeah. violating space. I did. I, the lunar laser ran. The, lo the lunar laser ranging experiments. There are observatories all over the world that are physically bouncing laser beams off of the retroreflectors that were left by the Apollo crew. I've gone over that. You haven't time. explained how, what's the difference between the temporal changes. You can't even explain because you don't understand what that you, is. I, you but you're trying that to say that's answered. the evidence. You asked that already and I answered it. How you do we can't know tell the moon is material? The, the different because people went to the moon and walked on it People brought material back from the moon, and I, <laughs> yes. So that's fake. how we know what? it's real. Check into so, their insurance claim so on it. So you have to, you have to, you have to deny all the other stuff to get to. They the denied point. the insurance claim because it, uh, it was fake. Who gives a shit about petrified some wood. insurance? Yeah, what about claim? The petrified wood? Okay, that the petrified well. wood was literally one example, and nobody right. had a chain of custody that went back to the Apollo program for right. it. It was just a gift <laughs> that was given you know, to the Dutch pr prime minister. You know, they still got a capsule in in the laboratory, which has never been opened till this day from the moon landing. Okay, Why we're still that? getting lunar yeah. material back from the moon, and it tests Tell guess what? different than any material on Earth. After so many years, why haven't they opened the capsule if they're so eager to show the, the I'll, moon I'll dust? This is the first time I've heard about this this capsule, so I don't know, Flat. So I did it's Dustin it. already leave? And what about all the data? I mean, even Don Petit sure. said, uh, when we all the data went missing, and now it's a painful process nope. to bring to They just it opened it. They just opened it last year. So that's false. They opened it last year. Last year? Is that yep. so? In 2022, the space agency saved the lunar dust, dirt for scientists working in the future with more advanced technology. And, yet, and they opened it last year in 2022 to investigate I, it. Oh, really? And, and uh, yeah. I don't know. This is going to this gonna go for every YouTube. Uh, Mr. Beast, he just had a video out, I think, three days, four days ago, uh -huh. where he went to NASA and looked at that capsule, which has never been opened yet. Maybe he filmed it before 2022, Flat, so I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I have one minute. <laughs> three days ago, okay. Yeah, every time says, we give you one I'll, minute, I'll share it. Wait, Dustin. Every time we give you one minute to talk, you say like the craziest stuff I've ever heard in my life. It so, doesn't make it not true. Uh, I know it sounds crazy. I don't expect it, you to believe well, me. Let's, Test let's all talk things. Talk about this capsule fast because, that which is true. Like I said, wait. This is debunking a claim in real time. So another conspiracy theory, theory claim I wasn't prepared for. They opened the capsule and they see it helps them because they're going back to the moon. They can use that because they can create better vacuums today to be able to investigate the material <laughs> in the capsule. Oh, but but Ozzy, didn't ago. you know that uh, Mr. Beast video is a good source, a oh, counter to this? Oh, I know. Mr. Yeah, because Beast. Mr. Beast He's video a shows to everybody that your claim you just gave. Let's see when bummed. Mr. Beast did the video. Oh, so he said okay, about so a couple days Beast ago, but we don't know when he films it. He films on a staggered schedule, so. So he filmed this Two years ago. I don't know when he filmed it, Flat. So it, ten, I literally just months. heard about that and I didn't watch the Mr. Beast video. Oh, wow. I guess I'm not qualified to talk about this at all because I don't watch Mr. Beast. All right, okay, but anyway, bad? that's not the point of the whole debate. 60 though. seconds. All right. Do you have something okay. to add there? Um, okay, okay, over 10 there. months. Oh. It was two years ago. There we go. Can I get two years seconds? ago? All right. We'll uh, let you have a moment there, Dustin, since you did fall out and drop out for a moment. Yeah, thanks. Sorry about that. I, I hit the wrong button or something. Anyway, I just want to speak to not just NASA symbolism, but all of their symbolism, Uplifting. not just not just the NASA equivalents, but the military tribe patches, everything, all of the different units of uh, Space Force, everything. They all use the serpent's tongue.
speaking through a flat disc as their symbol, they call it the vector. And I also want to show this real quick. Read between the lines. Take a listen. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology, and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. But going to Mars should be one of the next series of steps that humans do. The first step should be going back to the moon for a number of technical uh, reasons and exploration reasons. And then after that, Mars, maybe uh, orbit in uh, Venus atmosphere, maybe going to Europa. There's all kinds we of... We can barely hear this. ...to go to... Uh, Basically, you, that's you the, he de they destroy their technology. They you, can't get back to the moon type argument that NASA's you, official spokesperson is talking about. However, do you agree I just, with I just, the whole video? Wait a second. Do you agree with the whole video? Uh, no, I, I think he's so a lying cherry piece picking? of shit. Oh, so he's lying. So he, he's yes. lying the whole time? So he yes. lied. To, so NASA's he made, credibility is... So they didn't the destroy amendments. the technology. They may have destroyed the equipment that they used to go to the moon, but um, not the technology because technology is just the knowledge we have. Then why would it be a painful process to build so it back up? You're saying he lied. You so just build it back up. Yes, so he is complete. They're all liars, so but I'm using, telling you in their own words that so, their lies so are flimsy. So this is a good point to make. You're using, you're using the testimony as somebody who you believe is lying. Yes. So you, 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 your own credibility is lost. There. No, I'm showing that their credibility is is bogus. No, no you, you, you show when you show a liar point. lying. That's not saying that that you're lying. So he lied about what? us destroying the technology. Right, then, so we, so we do have the technology. The point. No, I believe I that the official the lie. You're you're missing a lot of the point. But the official no, lie not. is just so darn hard to believe. You're that missing the is point. You're kind of bogus. You're, Never you're, it's an incredulity argument. Definitely you're using, a, you're using a source you believe is lying to try to prove that he's telling the truth. Uh, like, yes, we, we have already cross-examined okay. the astronauts and their spokespeople, and we have found no, you them have to be not. liars. That already, is yes. false also. You have not cross-examined them. You Lavender haven't put them on space, a witness man. stand. Velvet you, haven't space, on, right? you haven't put them on a witness stand and, and, and questioned them. That's a lie. You're lying there. Okay. Dustin. Okay. I, I, didn't say, I, I didn't say that I did. I'm, I'm using their actual public statements, their claims, their testimony, which yes. is showing that they're a liar. Their no, testimony but that's shows what you said. You put them, you, I didn't say anything about putting them in court. You did. You keep saying court but yeah, actually so liars you use. liars can be cross-examined cross-examined cross and you, you would cross find that if they have them. conflicting witness if they have conflicting so witnesses you did not cross-examine them then you did I never you said are that. you done yes, you did. are you done like trying right. to like uh all right resist. let's end the screen share uh, there well we're not on topic you're talking about the credibility of of your liars of, that of astronauts you took science a, you're talking about the credibility of of sailors um airmen um, soldiers and saying they most of liars. those guys think it's flat. You're saying they're no, they don't. That's another yeah. lie. These guys are I all was free, in aviation. These are all I Freemasons of the tribe of Edomites, the one Jesus warned us about. That is actually <laughs> behind all of these lies, oh and they keep goodness. getting caught in different lies. Okay. How do you know any of this is true? You deny okay. the moon, but you believe the Earth is hollow and it Ozean? has a dome and it's flat. Ozean? Dude, you're getting a bit triggered, yeah? Okay. It's Why funny. in 50 years has no one gone past? Low Earth orbit. What we've been to you the moon. We went to the moon last this year, in 2023. What are you talking about? No we said person a lunar... has been past low Earth orbit in 50 no, years. That's not what you so, said. Wait, you wait, said... wait, 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 wait. Okay, y'all have all been talking. I've been silent. Does anybody know anything about the upcoming Artemis missions that are sending people back to the moon? Yeah. I mean, what are y'all going to say when those happen? Back to the moon. What what are you gonna say when those happen and everybody's watching them? And I do want to answer. Um, the did you watch the ten movie seconds? Gravity? Okay, ten seconds on that. Did you watch the movie Gravity? Jump in when you yeah, it sucked. They're all named after pagan entities for a reason. The Nimrod, mm -hmm. the Artemis, the Athena, the Zeus, the Apollo, all of history. this shit's pagan because they're pagan Satanists. It's symbolism. It's history. symbolism. Okay, so your argument is that the Artemis missions are going to be fake because they're named after a Greek goddess? I'm telling you that NASA is yes, faking all this stuff so that you won't believe in God as they set you up for final destruction, including with other things like the jab. All right. What so do you think? What do you guys think? You got your web of conspiracies. It all comes together and, and it all corroborates itself. Although you don't know who I am. Crazy, you, know. you know. <laughs> Some people have <laughs> a shadow cabal and are controlling a, a secret you shadow cabal. You should have studied me first. 
Uh, absolutely, uh, I can prove every bit of it. I can prove their no, sickness. I can prove they yeah, sacrificed babies. You can't prove I can, any of it. I, I can prove they've been kicked out of 109 countries for okay. a drink. You, can, you can't even prove Satan exists. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. No, you can't. You're, I've actually won yeah. those debates, and I would love you to can, have you. You're irrational. I would love to debate you on that. However, yeah, absolutely, they're Satanists, and you can prove every bit of it. Exactly. They've been kicked out of 109 countries for killing yeah. babies. You don't understand blood. what proof Ow. means. First of all, if you it's think you can prove Satan exists. 109 evictions found guilty in courts of law with monarchs it's involved. Insane. Hold on. I mean, it's not it's not false, though, is it? Yes, it is. Okay, no, can, I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I ask a question? I'm Who owns the whole space here. agency? So I, I come at this from a scriptural are, perspective. Anyway, Dustin, the question was not for you, bro. Well, I just there want you guys to know it. The, the question was not for you. Okay. 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 There okay. are multiple space agencies. Like there's ESA, there's NASA, there's ISRO, there's the Chinese one, there's the Japanese one. There are SpaceX. SpaceX all over the world. They're owned by different people. And I said, so why do they all have sorry, the same symbol? Different people. They don't different all people. have the same symbol. Same symbols. people. Same people. <laughs> the same people, Edom, owns them. The Edomites own every bit of them. That's why these are the same symbols. A serpent's tongue they speaking through a fourth disc. don't all have the same symbol. This is just more of your racism. It, and friggin I'll pull it back up for you. Dude, Hang on. You, no, you didn't show every symbol. Company. You showed like four symbols, dude. Okay, I'll look at the Chinese space symbol. Let's look at that. You might want to look at the company... You might want to look at the company behind all I, those companies. Umbrella I have a lot. Courts, I have a lot more of their symbolism breaking down each military patch, space force, everything, all branches, everybody, every government, all over the world, all using the same fer serpents, fork tongue through a flat disc. It is their symbolism. It is the UN logo. It is the map that they actually use. So you can deny it all day, but the fact is, we're on a flat, non-rotating Earth, and they are Satanists, and they're of a particular well, I, tribe. I and got it. I got the Chinese one up. It doesn't show any friggin' red line symbol. Oh, and you're just looking at like, like the one there's a circle. Like it's a, it's an open circle. You call it that snake No more screen balls. shares. I no mean, more. it's just ridiculous, dude. Like It's all is, relevant. Not 100% just, of this is relevant. No, none of it's relevant. You're just seeing, you're you're drawing a conclusion. You, you don't want to go past. You're looking for evidence that you think supports your conclusion. You, you, you don't want to go past conclusion. Your, your microcosm. No, you've already reached a conclusion you don't have evidence for any of it. I have tons of evidence for it. In None fact, I, in fact, I hope that I don't lose this debate. But so far, I've never lost a debate, including on biblical earth, including well, with scientists, lost. I've including, so, by the way, so be true. a scientist who wrote I, a big I've book called it Flat so Earth, that Flat you've lost Wrong, the base. and he even so wrote a cosmology. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me break in here. Let me break in here. Whoa, Dustin, no, the guy who wrote Flat Still. Earth, Flat Wrong is not a scientist. That's Robert Sunjanus, bro. Yeah. He got his PhD from an unaccredited Vanuatu university that's now defunct, and it was that in makes a lot of sense, actually. Not but he sure speaks the lingo. Anyway, he tried to argue that you could zoom He's in. He's not a first. scientist. That's the point. I have won my debate up against Robert Sanjanus, too. Do it we sounds like you won know? another debate, sir. Yeah, well, I, if I wasn't afraid to get demonetized for the crazy shit you've been saying. Okay, so that to my question then is, Grayson, just because the institution folded, does that make his PhD no longer credible? Even though it he's gone through the whole process, never credible because it was a non-accredited university. It was unaccredited. Great. And so so let's PhD, put it this way. His PhD Great. was in theology, so he's oh. not a scientist, Great. no matter how you slice it, and it's not even relevant to this topic. He could be a scientist Great. without so a degree it, in that. No, this is relevant yeah. to the topic because we're yeah, going to do this argument. according to Dustin's argument. NASA's accreditability is shown false, so therefore, anything you want to claim of them going to the moon is. Folks. And that is why that's, that's my point. opening. That is why in my opening, I explicitly excluded any NASA like evidence. I only looked at independent third parties and amateurs for all the evidence I presented. And their credibility is not refuted. You just deny what these their conclusions. You just deny. You, you deny what their say. actual statements that contradict with one another that cannot possibly they didn't be made contradict to square. contradict each other. You took it out of context. You cannot possibly make them square. Right. Either you took it, their statements out of no context. I thought here's a whistleblower. Those no more of those Here, can't you even like follow the <laughs> Sorry, rules? This like is a Ryan's whistleblower. Outline? This is a NASA whistleblower I'm trying to share. Let's talk. Oh, you're Grissom. literally just sharing memes you saw Gu on Facebook. Gus Grissom was murdered five days after blowing the whistle on their fake space program. I'm sure, bro. But I can't share it. So I'm ready for uh, you guys research dude. it and test all things and hold fast like, that, which is true. It's good advice. Test okay, all things. Okay, so 
what is the actual rebuttal to the retro reflectors on the moon? You can't go to space to place the retro reflectors there. You haven't proven gas pressure without containment yet. I already what said laser gravity time, contains the atmosphere on the Earth. and Gravity is not a force. I think it's a lie you've never tested. Mm. The, the retro reflectors, you think that they've never been tested, despite that there are observatories all over the world that test this stuff hundreds of times a year. Okay, like the what's one in, the moon? Like the one in the sense? Vatican named Lucifer. Yeah, those. Mm. Mm. <laughs> all right. It's all just Satan, I'm sure. What's 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 the you moon, have Grayson? no idea. What is the Welcome moon? Welcome to the seed war, everyone. All right. It's a celestial body that orbits the Earth, bro. How are you even asking that question? I think what we should do, again. guys, because we are, once again, kind of spiraling off the topic, and uh, I, I feel like we're going to have to do some work... Uh, uh, work on this post so uh, just bear with us guys uh, let's get these super chats up and uh, read out some of these super chats and respond to them uh, so there's lots of them coming in uh, you can continue uh, putting in the super chats we'll keep uh, the super chats rolling we are going to do an after show on uh, matters now so uh, if you want to come over there and check that out that'd be fun uh, let's see here. Congo 44 says sad fake Christians we have been to the moon I think that's commentary on uh, you calling people fake Christians and saying we have, and then he says after that we have been to the moon. So any commentary, uh, it's just I'm more not a okay. to talking to. Let's Can let Flatsoid in here. Based, yeah, go ahead, Flatsoid. Based on this uh, statement he just made, the Bible specifically teaches against the heliocentric model. Therefore, the moon is not a physical rock in a space violating a uh, natural law. And most Christian scholars disagree with you so i guess well those most christian scholar scholars Lesper. ignore historical oh, fact in the yeah. i'm sure that they're all they saying they have improper hermeneutics they don't read oh, an actual literal yeah. hermeneutic so everything's a metaphor to them you're more Genesis educated didn't happen. than the top experts in christianity in the world you're they're, better they're welcome can, to you're more educated me. okay welcome okay. to okay. Okay. Good. Good. i'm glad, we've, I'm ask, I'm glad we've confirmed that you're more educated than the guys okay with phd in theology that are christian let's let flatsoid in here flatsoid okay then I'm going to ask you a question, Job. Uh, in Job, God, uh, they asked God to stop the sun from moving so he can finish the battle. Did God stop the earth from moving or the sun from moving, please? Uh, also, they're having a shortage of actual scientists who can cognitively function at college level. Uh, oh, sure, science buddy. is not what you actually believe in. Um, yeah, are, right here. For are example, you, are you projecting a little here's bit? A, maybe there's no a, here's more AP, screen shares. AP news. My, my I goodness. can share evidence. I We're mean, not this, doing this is... any more screen shares. It's been a lot of screen shares science... for one debate. Okay. So, well, science is uh, firmly uh, against so-called official science. I mean, it's ninety-five percent oh, government sure. funded. Worse than fake sure. news, in but, fact. But you know, you ahead. know the truth. You're the expert. You know everything. Right. You like to attack me rather than my arguments a lot. I think I know who that you comes from. You keep attacking the knowledge of everybody else. Because you think you have special knowledge. So, yes. Well, I think I've I mean, studied harder. That's all. I think I don't know everything. Yeah, you but study I, harder than the yeah. scientists. Sure, bro. The what scientists? scientists? That's his whole yeah. point. You haven't brought up science yet, guys. There's been no science presented. I, I can give you quotes from science. Einstein and the other modern scientists that disagree with you as well. But, I mean, you, just, you won't they accept it. I can't share it. They don't disagree. All right. Next one. Let's keep going. LJ, reminder... Uh, LJ, uh, yes, you're here for the right debate. Uh, always commenting uh, with flat Earth questions, and uh, uh, you, you know, you're you're in the uh, not you're in a the flat right Earth spot. debate. So. Well, it's not a flat Earth LJ. debate, but usually LJ is always hanging out for those. We finally, finally are doing a moon hoax debate. Uh, I'm glad you're here. So it's basically a flat Earth debate, though. <laughs> I'm going to sip this beer if you keep... No, I'm kidding. All right, so uh, I'm, I'm just picking Grayson. If the moon is bright enough to be seen at 238,000 um, uh, miles away, how did the astronauts not get blind when landing on it, in quotation marks? Reflective light. So it's the, the sun is where the light comes from. So the, the moon uh, light is reflecting off the regolith, and it's an, what you call an albedo. So as you get closer to it, it's actually going to be like less lumens for the part that's reflecting directly back to you, I would think. But anyways, that that's why it's, it's coming from the sun and reflecting off the moon. Any thoughts down there or? I, want to I mean, that? yeah, it does, it, yeah it cold light debunks that okay. and lunar eclipses when the sun is still out also debunk that. 
I just I just love how they still beg the question of a physical rock which we cannot demonstrate in reality. We brought rocks back. Tra translucent moon also. You brought back uh, nothing because that was actually tested by the insurance companies on the claim and it was found to be bogus and in fact fake. It was just uh, petrified wood. All right. That Congo 44. Uh, yep, we're going to carry on there, gents. Uh, Congo 44, two questions for Flatsoid. As an expert in thermodynamics, please educate us all about Maxwell's demon and how can we bounce a signal off a retro reflector left on the moon? All right, so I'll let you answer the first one. We'll take five minutes on the panel and pass it around. So uh, uh, thermodynamics, please Maxwell's educate demon. us all about Maxwell's demon. Uh, over to you, Flatsoid. Maxwell demon in simple terms is just separation between the particles. That's about it. It sorts itself out. Okay, it's got to do with the increase in entropy. That's practically what Maxwell demon. You can imagine a demon with a partition, <laughs> opening and closing the partition and letting certain particles through. That's Maxwell demon in very simple terms. And no, I never claimed to be an expert. I just know enough to show the globe debunked. And I just want to mention Albert Einstein quote, 1952 whether or not the motion of the earth in space can be made perceptible in terrestrial experiments, all attempts of this nature led to a negative result. There's a mm -hmm. little bit of a skip there to kind of close it in, but they admit it that they can't prove it. And their top scientists uh, hawking everybody. They're all admitting it. Yeah, what was that key word there, terrestrial? Whenever you're uh, looking up, then you can see things that corroborate the motion of the earth. So you, you also make a great point in terms of terrestrial perspective. I want to mention that there's not a single photo of space, of, of, sorry, of planet Earth ever. It's all CGI. There's the sex there written in the cloud, all kinds of stuff. There Some are. of it's art. Earlier stuff Wait. was art. Modern stuff is CGI. You can zoom out on Google Maps. There's no Dustin. actual curve. There's no actual photos. You're once again quoting people you think are lying. You think they're I lying. I didn't quote anybody of, except Einstein, taking, who you, admits you're that taking, you're wrong. You're taking right, Einstein out of response. context and you're misquoting them. And but you think everything else he believed is a lie. But you're showing cherry you how picking, your scientists you're lie cherry picking and part admit. of a quote and seeing this cherry picked part People of his overall you, quote. People you're see seeing this give you a chance to respond part to this of the quote is unraveled. true, okay. but the rest of what he says is false. Okay. Because he's can a liar. you show us? Can you show us? Uh, I, I said I'd let Dustin respond to Ozian. I'm showing sorry, the discrepancies sorry. in your supposed scientists, brother. No, you're cherry picking. You're being dishonest. You should be honest about the claim. No, we can't go and through everything they've ever said. You should be honest We're about what Einstein is claiming. So Einstein believes that the moon exists. Einstein believes that space is real. Einstein believes that there's a vacuum in space. Einstein believes that and that the, he also that believes the Earth, you can't prove it. Einstein believes the Earth orbits the sun. So and Einstein believes says you can't, you can't do it from an optical thing from the Earth. He but we can you can't send, prove it. We can send satellites to space. He believes you can't prove it. <laughs> you can't send satellites to space. It's all CGI, and that's why they have sex Einstein written in the clouds, etc. There's like 30 different Einstein versions of the blue marble, in fact. So Einstein, Einstein said Einstein's you can't truth. prove You're any of this Einstein's motion. Einstein's honest. Einstein's true. He believed all that Einstein, stuff. Einstein, Einstein admitted right. that you cannot prove motion in his own quote right there. Any thoughts over there, Grayson, before we go back oh, to Flatsoid? Haven't heard from you in a hot motion. second. You're a liar. Actually, oh, I'm Grayson is frozen. You are a liar. I thought he was focused, but he is frozen. Grayson. And you, you're you're a liar, and you're of your father, the devil, and the truth is not oh, in you. Grayson's back. Okay, Christianity is false. So if you want to have a biblical debate, I can do that next. Too. I, I spanked Adam Green on that debate. I've spanked other people on that debate. Jeffrey Doherty, I've spanked him on that debate. Ooh. I love those debates, brother. Wow. Yeah, that's you awesome. Gold medal for being modest. Yeah. That's very. I'd love to be part Thank of that you. debate too. I'm All working right. on that. All right, awesome. uh, Flat Soil, let's see if you can do it to the panel again. Okay. Uh, second part of their question. Also, how can we bounce a signal off the retro reflector left on the moon? That's for you, Flat Soil. What is the moon? How do you get a retro reflector on something that you haven't even been able to prove that you can get to? It violates the second law of thermodynamics. Simple stuff. Been through this. Okay, so wait, he asked what the and moon then is. And I want to ask right, Grayson and Ozian. Wait, I want to answer the this. question. Well, I know what Ozian. Is the moon? Uh, Show us a photo of the moon, of, of the Earth from space, please. Just because Grayson was frozen, I'll give Grayson a chance to respond okay. first, if you don't mind, and then uh, we'll let you answer too. There are plenty of photos of the Earth from the moon. I mean, like the uh, the Not Japanese one. probe just just took one just a couple of years ago. Um, one. I just did. If you weren't paying attention, Not one. but in particular, um, the the question was like, obviously, the fact that we do bounce 
signals, lasers off of the retro reflector on the moon shows that, in fact, we did go to the moon in the Apollo program. That's what that evidence demonstrates. Uh I just want to mention a quote from Stephen Haw Stephen Hawking in 2010, so much more recent. Does well, it have to deal with the? Moon can I can I actually reflectors? finish? Can I finish? Right, well, you're always you post more memes. That's well, all you, you guys do. don't like evidence. Apparently, I've summarized it for you with pictures and infographics. That's what that is. But anyway, quote: One can use either picture as a model of the universe. For our observations of the heavens can be explained by assuming either the Earth or the Sun to be at rest. That's Hawking. I could keep going. That sure relative motion. Um, but the, what is the moon is 43% oxygen, 20% silicon, 19% magnesium, 10% iron, 3% calcium, 3% aluminum, 0.42% chromium, 0.18% titanium, uh, titanium, and 0.12 manganese. And that's I think according to water. NASA, according to all of the, the actual insurance was, companies, you what they was. say it's 100% petrified wood. Okay, well, the here's, claims. here's the photo that y'all were wanting from, from the Hokuto R lander. All right, it's your first screen share. I'll let you get away with it because I think there's oh, no stars. It's only your second one, I guess. But, Sorry, so. is there that you a photo? Here's, here's a picture a of the Earth with the moon in the foreground. There you go. The Japan's Hokuto R lander before crashing the moon sent, like, had this photo. And so that's the crash before. Sorry. I provided exactly what you were asking for. It's Sorry, no stars. It's fake. It's in the screen share. There's no stars. It's <laughs> fake. The, yeah, the is it a photo or a stars, rainbow, Grayson? The absence of stars does not make it fake in any yes, way. Yes, it absolutely it just, does. It's just Do you know the, how cameras the exposure work? of the photo. Exposure. They, they exposure. would absolutely work. They would work better yeah. in a vacuum than they would in a uh, contained air bubble, which is what yeah, you claim on you, you have, with, with you know atmospheric you have, refraction and such. But if you're in a vacuum, you can Justin, see the pinpoint just like if you're on a mountaintop. Justin. Next time you, you want to test that out, go take your photo, try to take a picture of the night stars, and then put a giant flashlight right in the foreground and let me know if you get any stars. We, we covered that earlier. I shared an image, different slides with different colors and light scenes, and you could see the stars in all of them, just depending on how bright. So even okay, when it was fairly, fairly bright during the day, you can see it. We're gonna move There's on. no bright object in the foreground here. It's just tiny yeah. little planet There's Earth moon, and no dude. stars. And the moon There's is the like moon. in the, it's not that bright. No, it's not as bright as what I showed you earlier. Not even close. When it's taken up right. half the screen, it's it's pretty bright. When you're trying to take a picture of the Earth, you're not going to be able to see because you're 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 trying to get a shot of the Earth from the Moon. Those Zero two objects pictures. are going to like dim out the 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 stars behind them because of Five the. Seconds. What? It's what far more convincing. Like? With All right, let's let Flatsoid respond. The question was for Flatsoid, so if he's got something to say, let's let him talk. So, so I want to know what camera did they use, Grayson, to take that? rendered image because it's not a photograph oh, wow. uh whatever was the hokuto lander you probably know it better than me right what camera did they use flatsoid you're the one that brought it up so i'm asking you a simple question i don't know you look at the resolution as well use. really weird All right. let's go Why is on. That weird? we've got lots of questions coming in here guys so uh Let's see if we can wrap this all the way around. Uh, LJ comes in again. The lunar model was constructed with items available at the dollar store. Google it. Why would NASA destroy the original Apollo lunar landers? And in the interest of time, we'll uh, try to keep these to the side that they're dedicated to. So that one would be for uh, Grayson and Ozian from LJ. I mean, it's just completely factually incorrect that it was constructed with stuff from the dollar store. So, I mean, that's just kind of like a little gotcha or whatever. And I don't even think that they destroyed the lunar landers, did they? There's one There's one left. Like, it hasn't been used, I believe. All right. I don't know where they're displayed in museums, but, you know, again, we, we show that the moon land, landed from third-party independent sources and the retro reflectors. That demonstrates that it did happen beyond a shadow of our, a reasonable doubt, and our opponents were not able to refute any of that evidence. All right. So I'm sorry, Dustin, but you've lost your first debate. I do it's have... up to the commenters, friend. That's I, up to the commenters every time. I do have a hot one coming in here, if you guys want me to, uh, if you don't mind there, Dustin. And hey, Flatsoy Flat finally got his tinfoil. He can make a hat. I don't mind at all. I'm oh. used to it. I just stole a panel of the lunar module. So, uh, Maya Marie uh, says, well, why do flat earthers come to debates and say they didn't prepare much? Is it because you know you don't have evidence? So, without 
evoking the actual responder, uh, what would you say uh, to somebody who would say something like that? Well, James, you can be my witness. You just recently asked me to participate in this. I'm used to doing, as everyone can t see for themselves, other types of debates, a very different variety of diverse variety of debates, including globe biblical earth debates, which I'm still undefeated in, and I'm not bragging. I, there's a lot of things I don't know, but this is what I've studied. This is what I do know. And I was a lifelong devout atheist until I studied this. It was the last thing I studied. In fact, I thought it was stupid, just like you guys do. And then I tested it, and then I stopped thinking it was stupid, and I said, I can't I can't attack it anymore, and I started to defend it. So we all, all of us uh, so-called flat earthers, you know, I prefer biblical earther, we, we believed one time what you believe now and we didn't come back from what we learned to that belief system for a reason once you go flat you never go back that's the truth right. of it any thoughts there flat hey, yeah i 100 percent agree with dustin on this uh but it's as simple as that we even me i don't usually bait moonlight debate moonlight because i'm more for the flat earth kind of cosmology thing and the fact that they aren't able to uh back up their claims that you can violate natural law shows everything we don't really need to to show more than that no one's nope. ever claimed to know everything but we do know enough to show the globe is fake that's your claim they're violating natural law no one's violating any laws of physics to go to demonstrate the moon. Gas that's Sanford your Sanford. claim we the earth yeah it's contained you by gravity and Some... you, if you want there are over five thousand documented exoplanets most of them have atmospheres <laughs> that are contained by the force of gravity. If you are interested, gravity in, is not a force. It means not a force for if, 180 if, years already. Flatsoid, flatsoid. If you are interested in any other kinds of pressure being contained without a physical container, but with a force, look at surface tension. Look at you can look at surface a surface tension a, on liquids is not yeah. the same as gas. Ten it is, a, it is a fluid, yes, and then you can liquid. also you can also look at a penning trap that uses like electromagnetism to contain charged particles without a physical container you so can not look gravity then so yeah not you could look at again and I'm, the gas is I'm, already contained by the way stop interrupting me please all right I five am, seconds there I'm sorry, wasn't we do have to move on to not, us, the it is to them as you well, were yes. not yeah. i was answering i was interrupting you while you guys were supposed to talk He's not letting me 10 right. seconds. Just one second there, Flatsoid. Give him 10 seconds to respond since we've gotten this far in your back and forth. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we're going to try to behave ourselves. Uh, <laughs> nice tinfoil. All I was illustrating was when you can have a force acting as a container. Gravity is a pseudo force, but you can measure it just like any other force in Newtons. You can have a force that's containing fluid pressure without a physical container that force is acting as a container surface tension electromagnetism you can look at gravity doing it on other planets there's pressure great there's pressure wave generators that like yeah. really generate waves of pressure that don't need any container in our atmosphere so there you go oh. there's a few examples can i give a closing statement there's there? pressure in that cup i have right. something can, to say on yeah, that too. can i give a closing statement on this all right yeah each if of you, you can have 15 are... seconds is fine yeah, if you jump in a swimming pool well, maybe and you swirl the water around in the swimming pool, say, see, I'm swirling around the, the, the water, therefore not containment. Is that swimming pool contained or not? The total swimming pool is contained, but the pockets of localized higher and lower pressure that you've created with your movement are not contained in a physical container. <laughs> Can I get 10 seconds? You just contradicted yourself. Yes, as nope. well, we'll... Uh... Like I said, Grayson, we're going to try to keep Maybe it back 20. and forth. Uh, well, he asked me a question. So. I know, I know, it's fine. We'll try to keep it. Uh, uh, I hate to interrupt you guys. Low, because um, we got lots of questions there, but it's okay. I, Go ahead, Dustin. I want to. I want to. Um, I don't want to. I want people to understand our our position on gravity. It's not that we don't believe in up and down. Things fall. Obviously, you know, this happens. It's that we don't believe in water clinging to a cannonball shooting through a, a vacuum, basically, with air clinging to it, and we don't feel a breeze, uh, and nothing pulls off into space. And in fact, at the speeds they're telling us, it would look a lot more like sort of like a, dro a droplet of water like shooting through space with a oh. giant ocean tail sticking oh. out behind us. Hey, none of us uh, believe all... that either. None but of us on this panel uh, believe that's true. None of that's us. That's essentially it. And also, I've so also noticed a trend. Man. Just five more man. seconds. Five more seconds, right. and you can talk. Uh, I've also noticed a pattern uh, of people saying, did, did the Bible really say what it said it said, or did the scientists really say what I just quoted them saying? I want to just mention there's a deception happening here, and people can judge that for themselves as well. 
Yeah, you're right. quote mining. That's the deception. Next question is for you guys. So if you got any other commentary Morning. and you want to ask them a question, that's fine. But we're going to try to keep these questions to the side that they're for. And yeah, if you want to branch out, that's up to you guys. Next one is for you guys. So it's up to you. Uh, from LJ, uh, how would a lander made of foil keep from exploding? And that's how he wrote it out, too. So I had to say it that way. What? Why would it explode? He's probably seeing the pressure within the, the lander. So the lander was designed, I think, for a quarter atmosphere of pressure. So it, it's it's like going down three meters below water. That's how much pressure. So if you've ever been to a bottom of a 10-foot pool, that's how much pressure that's being pushed outward um, to the lunar module. So a sheet of aluminum foil wouldn't even break. And it's not a sheet of aluminum foil either. So. Uh, you, you can visually see it's paper thin on the actual official uh, lander uh, photo, and it's also bent and crooked, and there's not like even matching screws and straps have, and such. And, and literally, they, they, they actually didn't finish it. They had they insulation. Didn't it. You understand they had insulation too. The the aluminum was shield the shield from the charged particle radiation going through the Van Allen belt. Uh, they had they they had insulation. So even even the one astronaut says it's so thin he could stick his finger through it. There's panels so, where the like corners so sticking out because they forgot like, to screw it. So, okay, so if you took a sheet of aluminum paper to a bottom of a ten foot pool and pulled it up with the sheet rip, surface displacement with the if sheet rip. <laughs> if you're sending people into space, would you not screw in all of the corners? With the sheet rip, or the aluminum foil rip? No, it wouldn't. So surface that's how much pressure place. there is. The outward pressure to the to the shielding is a quarter atmosphere. It's equivalent to going down. Three meters uh, below sorry. water. You're going three meters below water. The water's pushing on you from the outside. Yeah. If you're in a vacuum, there's nothing pushing on from the outside. No, it's pushing out. So the, the quarter atmosphere and inside nothing the pushing container. Back. Correct. For those so who have, quarter what happens when you put a it's balloon in a vacuum? A, it's only right. a quarter atmosphere James. of pressure. That's it. This is what Ryan, happens if you put a balloon in a vacuum? In, anyone who's been in an airplane knows yeah. this is fake. Paper will not survive atmospheric push that would be necessary to get into fake space or even to just fly a jet. Show me the math for that, Dustin. So the, you, the lander was inside. <laughs> was inside a, the lander, the it. lander itself was encased when it went to orbit. Just show me the math. About? Then, then right. why was it rattled then, and why were the paper, you know, the sheet metal all loose? And the right, lander was last... enclosed. It wasn't like exposed to the atmosphere as it went to space. Last thought to you, Grayson, if you got any, and we're going to move on. Yeah, our opponents either put up or shut up. Give me the math, give me the models, or just don't say anything. Let's move on to the next question. We have lots of questions to get through. We're not going to be here for six hours. All right, dude, let's get through we the are. questions for sure. We got lots of them. Uh, keep them all coming they in, have is you know, math and models. Uh, Justin, not we'll your time to talk, all the time. bro. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's try to get through them. But I will also remind everybody, I got to do the uh, the modern day debate PR as well. Uh, hit the like button if you haven't already. Uh, if you're having fun hanging out in the live chat tomorrow, we are going to be doing a flat versus globe debate. It's Mercedes and Kyle versus Leo and Mark Reed. Uh, Justin's going to be hosting that one and then be doing the after show, uh, which we'll be doing uh, one for this debate as well on matters now. So uh, definitely if you want to check that out, that's cool. Uh, if not, that's all cool, too. Uh, let's carry on with the super chats, everybody. And uh, like I said, thank you so much for the support. Free Free Palestine says, what star was used in the inertia navigation system in order to go to the moon? Please, CGI globe lovers, don't ignore the question and welcome to Flat Earth. Uh, what was the question? What star was used? What star was used in the inertia navigation system in order to go to the moon? I don't know. Why, do you guys know what they're referring to here? Right, I Polaris, know. mate. Okay. Inertia navigate. So how did they navigate to the moon? Like they knew where the earth was. They knew where the moon was. They used general Polaris. relativity to get to the moon. The but they point used is, Mars. Great topic. But let's look. They used 37 stars plus the sun, moon, and earth for navigation. So 37 stars. They used the list includes stars named Navi, Rigor, the Gnosis. Um, so 37 stars in sun, moon, and earth. There you go. Sort of a side yeah, question. How did they get the orientation, guys? We can see the moon. I I don't. Everybody usually uses. We know the Polaris orbit of the moon to orient. So. 
We use po Polaris is used for a lot of uh, on, for uh, earthly proofs, navigation to go north, so, so we know where north is. You don't have to see Polaris to navigate the Earth, especially with GPS. It's another topic. I, this seems like a, a useless segue. Uh, yeah, any other it, good it, questions? You, you only need three, like. Uh, you only need to see three fixed things to be able to navigate. It's, so, it's really yeah. funny how, like, the only time a question did not spawn a huge discussion was the time that Ryan walked away from the computer and we can't go to the next question. Yeah. But also, well, you, 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 went, you just admitted that they're fixed. They are indeed fixed. Yeah. Polaris is always the same place every year, same precision clockwork. Yeah, not uh, a relatively <laughs> Good, fixed. The move, no, the it's top. perfectly fixed. It actually, there's ancient archaeological like it's ruins so, where they have a pinhole that no. goes like ten That's feet, so lines easy up same year. Bunk. It's so on like History Channel and such. Bunk. You can find those. Even the same even the sun. The beginning of time. All right, I think Grayson, you had a thought there. You, uh, this is for you, yeah, Polaris, it, so you can inject when you need. Yeah, Polaris was not always like the North Star. It's not even the exact like center of of which like the celestial sphere t like spins around it's it's just a little bit off center and it changes it's not always constant all his little ancient aliens pyramid stuff has been debunked so many times at this point it's not the topic it, it it lines up every year exactly the same place down a like a 15 foot 10 foot shoot with like pinhole precision and it lights a certain chamber on a certain day of the year in some of these ancient ruins which is actually a fairly common practice in fact thousands uh, of years because it is not a cannonball covered in water cannon you know shooting through space followed by a shotgun blast well, no one believes random. that no one that is exactly the official model. Yeah. No, it's Cannonball not the official model. Water. You're lying about the official model. And also, oh, we, we've established who moving. the liar is here. Something's right. moving. Yes, this you. Is question. Something's moving. Yeah. You can see a different face of the sun. So either the sun is rotating, because you see a different face of the sun, right? Or the earth is going around the sun. One of the two is true. No, we could go into like the the the. We get the final word on this question. We could go into the various wobbles and such and how they're you complete. You think the like, sun is nonsense, CGI? Then okay, good. They All actually right. claim three competing wobbles. All right, I I hear the plea of uh, uh, Grayson. What's going on, buddy? Uh, you had something to say or? Uh... Sorry. Yeah, I'm saying that we were supposed to have the final question for this one or the final statement for this question because it was a question to us, right? So I'm saying let's move on to the next question. Sure thing. Yeah, we should definitely do that because we do have a lot of questions. That's guys. what I'm trying to, to do here. All right. All right. I, I can tell uh, Grayson might be in a bit of a, a hurry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a one minute timer, guys, and we will get through these super chats. All right. So question for oh sorry congo 44 no no ad homs all right we want questions that are gonna kick our conversation in the butt all right uh thanks for your first super chat toby uh ditto on what i just said um free free palestine says the anti kithra mechanism is evidence that the greeks uh knew we are one beautiful family on a non-rotating flat earth <laughs> in the center of the whole universe uh i think that was okay, for you guys I can respond again, to that so one minute matter. guys yeah the antikythera mechanism doesn't have anything to do with the shape of the earth the ancient greeks from eratosthenes onward knew that we were not on a flat earth and the builders of the antikythera mechanism were in the hellenistic age like after Eratosthenes. So they were also aware that the earth was not flat. You don't need any of that for to build the Antikythera mechanism. All right, 40 seconds left. It's based on geocentric principles. It's not. Yes, it is. Oh. You might want to look it up, mate. Anyway, I'm well aware of the, the Antikythera mechanism. You're just talking out your butt about it. 25 seconds, Ozean, if you had anything to add. Yeah. All right. Pointless Poppy coming in. So lightning isn't real because people once believed lightning was created by gods, referring to comments on Newton believing in gravity. Uh, yeah, I think that's for uh, for you two down there, is it? Yeah. I don't think I understand that question. Let's <laughs> repeat it. So lightning isn't real because people once believed lightning was caused by gods, referring to comments on Newton believing in gravity. Oh, okay. Well, we have a better uh, natural uh, sciences answer Super for science. things now. Uh, 
knowledge has increased. I mean, the age of the internet and such. Uh, and there's more truth tellers now, frankly. Uh, they were killed for saying a lot of this stuff throughout most of Roman history. So uh, frankly, uh, things have changed, and that's kind of why this stuff is coming out when it is. You used to die for reading the Bible. You used to have your, uh, you know, your whole life, your whole family would be burned at the stake with you for daring to translate it because it didn't agree with Rome's official science or official whatever, because they had a lot of power and they were basically selling middlemanship to salvation. It's a whole different topic, but basically, um, it, you know, this doesn't, it seems more like a sarcastic remark than a question. All right. Mm. Uh, just yeah, a so point, I'm, well, I'm response, response, I guess. So, or go ahead, flat sorry. It's over to flat sorry. And no, you can respond quickly. It's fine. Because all I was going to say is, um, I forgot my whole train of thought now. Sorry. Go man. ahead. Uh, <laughs> the whole can... point of the comment was just showing just... that your argument about Newton, what he said about gravity, yeah. can be applied to what ancient okay. people said about lightning. One second. They're really quick about I, lightning, though. Yeah. Light, lightning requires atmospheric pressure to be true, gravity to be true. So our understanding, the natural law is understanding of lightning requires all this other physics and stuff to be true. So, yes. We can show, we can show between, between, no, it's over to between, Flatsoid. Sorry, Dustin. Uh, he didn't okay. get a chance to Then I know what yet. I want to say. First of all, I want to say the statement, because it's more statement, not a question. It's a non sequitur. Yeah. And it's a totally a, got nothing to do with one another. Gravity is not a force, by the way. And gravity is pseudoscience where they, they believed lightning was a belief system. It was not based on science. Just like flastogen was considered a thing because of pseudoscience. And today it's not. That's why gravity right. was considered a force and why it's not a force today. That's right. why it's not science. It's pseudoscience because it's belief. Mind. We're going to move on from just there, 10 seconds, guys. if I can. Uh, my, my, I want to address the lightning aspect for five, 10, ten seconds. Basically right, a really taser quick. analogy. If you turn a taser this way, it will still connect lightning without any sort of like gravity mechanism. If you turn it this way, it would still happen the same way. It, it doesn't need uh, gravity for electrical discharge to happen. Yeah. You can you can run I didn't see that, playground. That's touch, beside the point. And they shock static electricity. That's the point. Well, that, that's basically, uh, the, the, I think, as I understand it, this argument. All oh. right, let's move on there, fellas. Uh, so... Uh, question for Dustin and Flatsoid. Uh, what year did you? Oh, Congo, that's not. That's also just being cheeky. Why are you sending all these cheeky super chats in? I want to read them and have fun with the with what you're doing. But uh, uh, this is not the time. Not the time. All right. So, um, yeah. yeah. Sorry, can't read that one either, buddy. Gaius Tusky says, if I had a drink uh, for every time flat Earth uh, or moon landing is a hoax were actually demonstrated, I would be a Mormon again. So uh, <laughs> we'll release one of those. <laughs> okay. You guys are being real comedians in the chat. You know that? Like There are Mormon flat earthers. Well, Kyle's going to be uh, yeah, hanging out tomorrow. tomorrow and uh, I do believe that he's a member of the LDS church there. So uh, let's see. Uh, he can correct me on that. Maybe he does go by Mormon. I'm not sure. Um, LDS. He goes by LDS. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. LJ says, if the moon was a stupid, dusty rock, why doesn't gravity pull it down to Earth? Why don't we have real Guys. videos from Earth of asteroids hitting the moon? Uh, over to you, uh, and Grace. The first one, it's because of the moon's orbital speed. All right. There's a balance between its orbital speed and gravity. So where it's moving fast enough to where it won't just get sucked in. And then what was the second question? Uh, so yeah, gravity, and then second one. Why do we not have any asteroid videos uh, hitting the moon? Asteroids hitting the moon. Videos of that. Uh, well, oh, we God. we do we have seen impacts on the moon. We've seen before and afters of new impact craters on the moon. So, there oh, there go. is one. There's this st watch. Dunny footy captures meteorite impact on the moon. Yep. So I could show it. There's on NASA's website. No, no screen shares. But yes, if you want no to go check that shares. out, anybody, you go. You go ahead. We've had so many screen shares. I've got to. I've got to mitigate that. Uh, let's see. So uh, it's literally all coming from like seconds. one guy. <laughs> twenty seconds. If you guys have any other thoughts, let's or let's move on. Yeah. Um. Apparently, according to your guys' uh, narrative, the moon is moving away from the Earth, not towards it. So yeah, by it will make it worse and worse by three point eight centimeters per year. Yes. 
All right. Let's carry on, guys. Free Free Palestine says, Rockets can't get high enough to show the mythical blue marble. Be smarter. Test the pseudoscience curvature formula and be happy on a non-rotating flat Earth. So the main part of that uh, assertion well, I'd like to there, respond to it. I was listening. But uh, rockets, basically, yeah. it, just made yeah. a, it made a claim that rockets can't do something that we've demonstrated that rockets can all tonight. So that claim can be dismissed because they didn't provide any evidence for that claim. And then, um, yeah, they actually, yeah. Ozine, do you want to take a? No, wanna... that's a, what I was going to say. Is like the moon landing proves rockets can go to space. So, yeah, I mean, we've been no, doing that second all night. Law. Again, the second law proves you wrong. We, we've demonstrated that you don't know what you're talking about with the second law. The you experts, know. the experts in physics and the the laws of thermodynamics, all of them, the experts believe we went to the moon. So. The We're experts the like expert. Einstein and Hawking say that you can't prove movement. They, but they all believe we went to the moon. Right. They are liars, but so they the, admit so well you can't prove minute. movement. They lie sometimes. <laughs> I don't understand what you That's just right. said. Well, when they, they run believe. into something they can't do, they're like, I can't prove it. Eh. So I, I will what you not, just said. your testimonial flat soy to me is irrelevant because you're not the okay, expert okay. Let's on this way. thermodynamics. One, one flat soy. You okay, have to be an expert. No, hey, no. What was the second part of that okay. question? Let's right, put it this way. Right. Does guys. natural law does natural law care what you believe? What? Does you natural law, law care, what, care you what you believe? Um no. Great. So I don't give a shit what they believed. It violates natural law. So they're they the ones was wrong. They Hold understand on. the law better than you do. This is Hold the on. point. Ozian, I just want to make it very clear that we've clearly demonstrated that. Flat Soy doesn't understand the second law. He thinks that it applies to not isolated system as it clearly does. He also doesn't understand that forces like surface tension, electromagnetism, or gravity can all contain gas pressure. So that doesn't violate the second law at all. Ryan, gas pressure can't have second? surface tension. Ryan, well done. What Thanks for that, Ryan, Sorry. what was the second part of that question? All right. Gas well, pressure is unbonded. It cannot have surface tension. All right. So you're speaking okay. out of your ass. All right, again. All right. I'm getting asked a direct yeah, question. Pressure. I said so pressure. There's there's no second part of it. Uh, they just said uh, be smarter, test pseudoscience, curvature formula. So the main oh, part right, of that right. was they said rockets can't get high enough. But if you had something to say, I, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to address this whole. Just one second, Dustin. Formula. We'll pa pass it to you before we're done. Okay, I wanted to just address this whole curvature formula that flat earthers erroneously use all the time by pretending that the atmosphere doesn't exist. Every time that a flat earther uses a curvature formula, they never account for atmospheric effects like refraction, which you literally have to do. That's part of the globe model. They ignore the presence of the atmosphere every time they use this bogus curvature calculator. Every time. They never account for refraction. Well, the things like the Suez Canal, which is 100 miles of straight canal and water surface unbroken, would disprove the need to use any sort of curvature. Oh, it wouldn't. However, I want to just mention something about uh, Newton, if I may. You guys are talking about some math and how the math would work. Here's basically how it went down. Newton made up gravity. Then they realized the calculations all lead to a giant singularity where all of the universe gets squished into oblivion. So then they made up dark energy, which is basically anti-gravity. Oh. But then the calculations now showed everything will move away from e each other until dark energy rips apart the very fabric of outer space. So to balance both, they made up dark matter to hold gravitons and oh. dark energy together. It is all lies. Nope, that's actually completely ahistorical and not how any of those developments happen in cosmology. Like he's, According to your he's opinion. completely wrong about every single it's, point that prove he just it. made. It's literally God of the Gaps argument. Prove dude. it. Literally. Pro prove a Gish Gallup is false. Okay. Yeah. In, in like oh. a minute. Do it. All right. Oh, okay. We well, like, just, just, like, just saying, ridiculous. like Einstein did I'll not make a claim you can't prove. I'm just explaining it right Last now. Einstein to you, did Grayson. not add ten seconds. Einstein did not add his cosmological constant to avoid some kind of singularities, right? Schwarzschild was the one that worked out like the existence of black holes after Einstein had already put in and then taken out the cosmological constant. So no, that didn't happen. The dark matter was theorized like way before dark energy was, way before the cosmological constant even was, like back in the 1800s. And then they were adding they were adding it in back when they were studying the cosmic microwave background. So no, dark energy was not added back until 1998 when they observed the accelerative expansion of the universe in type 1a supernova observations for which they won the Nobel Prize. So your timeline they, is completely wrong on every single point demonstrate all of that however i just basically want to add that all of these people have been using the same occult textbooks that go back to basically the pre-flood teachings like the uh, hermetic texts of thoth or hermes 
uh, the yeah. so-called green. Well, let's tablets, have a debate of God which we've shown that Newton was basically not only declassifying. I'm sorry, uh, 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 he was uh, translating, but he was also obsessed with, and that's where he pulled his cosmology. Newton was the last of their so-called uh, mystery kids or sages or whatever they want to call in the occult world. Yeah, but he was not a real true, scientist. Bro. None of that. Is, tested. None of that is true at all, except for the fact that Newton was super into alchemy. But guess a, what? That opinion holds as much gravity that, as but, Moon. But Man guess is. what? That doesn't make him wrong about his other laws. Like we don't say we should throw out calculus because Newton was into alchemy. Well, your opinion holds as much weight or gravity, so to speak, pun intended, as the moon landing. So prove it. Yeah. So good. Then I'm glad you think so highly of my opinion because both of those hold weight. Thank you. Ryan, next question. All righty. All right. You guys are very lively in that chat down there. It's uh, it's good to see. I uh, see there's, uh, yeah, just almost, what, over 500 still watching and only 100 likes. I don't know if you guys got lazy thumbs or what, uh, but I'm not I'm not impressed with that. So hit that like button uh, if you guys are enjoying yourselves. Clearly you are. You're still hanging out. So uh, let's carry on with the Super Chats and keep them flying in, everybody. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 as I see what we got. Atheist Jr. says, For Flatzoid and Dustin, how do you explain lunar sunsets? I haven't heard from you in a little bit, Flatzoid, so uh, I'll, I'll kick it over to you first. Lunar sunsets. Um, first, you have to beg the question that there is such thing as a lunar sunset. And I don't know what the sun or the moon is, so I can't really make a claim of it. Dustin, any thoughts? What are you, Dustin? Um, well, I would like to share screen, but basically the lunar eclipse debunks any sort of uh, sunset or lunar or eclipse type arguments. <laughs> you can still have the sun out during a lunar eclipse. One so, last sh um, screen some, share. Something Fine. else. I like Grayson do it. One last one if you need to for your example. Um, without like a good direct answer for what you're talking about. But in a short moment, I mean, that's basically going to rebut the uh, argument that they're making. This had nothing to do with the question. Repeat the question. Okay, now I gotta open up another thing. For Flatsoy and Dustin, how do you explain lunar sunsets? What is a lunar sunset? Like a sunset That's on the screen moon. chair. Sorry, what did you say, Grayson? A sunset on the moon, I believe is what he's referring to as a lunar sunset. Yes. Uh all of the happens moon once footage, a month. All of the moon footage is faked. And in terms of the actual light transitions and, and different like um moons the moon days for example like i follow the sabbath like the old testament says and i keep the moon calendar to do so so uh you know i watch the moons for their phases that phase thing has been happening in perfect synchronicity since the beginning of time every seven days you get either all right a full moon so or just half to be moon clear. Or empty moon uh just for sabbath for signs and seasons reason. that's the that's well i'm telling you it's god's uh it's god's clock we're looking at it from below seconds, looking up and it changes light and uh, sort of ellipsis, so to speak, depending on season. And why didn't why didn't he make it? Grayson, so Grayson only, had something. I was in just one second. Grayson, yeah. just to be clear, the only thing that you just said that actually addressed the question that was asked was it's fake. So I'm addressing where the moon and the sun are, and you're talking about like the the uh, apparently the light eclipsing on the moon, which is all in the desert. That's all fake footage. So I mean, you have no actual proof. We went to the moon, and we we pretty much yeah, we make this debate. And re frankly, like I, I got to talk about a lot of other topics that are absolutely fundamental and, and connected to this topic because your entire cosmology is built on a castle of sand. What? Why it's, does it's it a clock above us going in circles? Why doesn't the why don't the if God was like setting this up, why didn't he set the phases of the moon? Like 12 total phases of the moon would totally match one year and it doesn't it's off right sorry so you know we work the wrong... the Gregorian calendar yeah we're no, using the wrong no calendar. that's irrelevant so that hmm. the calendar that, that we is. use is irrelevant actually the no, book of enoch warned us actually, about that if we don't use that the seasons change so you actually the... think the seasons are supposed to change book of jubilees and i think also like the, the book month... of enoch warned us about us changing the calendar okay. and then that, that would make the moon out of season out of sync however mm -hmm. okay. the moon basically changes light based the, on the, the... day so you so you think that uh, like holding you your hand over a flashlight? The, you think that the winter should change every year, like every year by a week? Do you, uh, do you know how the Hebrew calendar works? Or by uh, you think that you think or I think it's two weeks, right? Or no, three and six days. So you think the winter should shift five days every year? Is that what you no, think? No, I think that based on our modern calendar, the moon and the we actually have to do things like daylight savings. No, we the winter shift doesn't dates. shift. Winter we have to change shift, and add though. zodiacs and such. So if you right. actually use the original no. uh, 360 
four or was it 360? I forget. 10 seconds. Hey, calendar. It's, your it's perfect. And it syncs up perfect. Not perfect. Yeah, but that doesn't net... match the number of months. It doesn't match your it's... months. Like a month is what? How long is a month? In it's your supposed month? to be 13 it's, months. On the pagan Originally calendar. 13 months. So how, pagan long, how long is a lunar cycle in your math? All right, question. It, All right, Flatsoid's been trying to get a word in here. Ozzy, in one second. Uh, uh, Flatsoid's trying to get a word in here, guys. It doesn't so match. Let's, let's okay. let Flatsoid in. He was originally, saying about the calendar, was, and let's yeah. let him expand on that. Um, originally, it was a lunar calendar with 13 months. The Gregorian changed that whole system, and that's why it's out of whack. Gregory, by the way, translates as fallen angels or watchers. Mm -hmm. Etymological fallacy. Do you know what that is? I know it wasn't based on them supposedly, but I just want to mention that little coincidence. It's an interesting. It's twenty nine and a half days. Is is a month like a lunar month, right? We have our modern seasons on our modern cosmological calendar. The Gregory calendar are off. That's why we have things so, like the daylight savings time and such. Well, that's that's a different reason. It's to change the number of hours in a day. It's because it keeps, the, it's not the, synced. It doesn't, that doesn't awesome. matter. The clock so is the off. thing we that have adjusts, to keep fixing it the, because the, the clock is off. The thing that we use to adjust for the seasons is a leap year. So if we if we didn't have a leap year, then every four years the seasons would change shift the clock one day. That is the the. Do you think daylight savings times has to do with the seasons? Exactly. Like, this is daylight no. savings time right here. It has, to do, with, it has to do with the times the businesses are winding open. the clock. Okay, I just want to make to do with the times the businesses are open. Winding the clock. Oh, see, I, I always thought it was something. farming. Which like, leap? Which keeps leapfrogging forward because they're Let on me the wrong just calendar. make one point. Can we move I've on to the next question? To. I just want to make one point really five quick. Five seconds, okay? everybody. I, it will take five seconds. Okay. Regardless of whatever calendar you use, any calendar you want to use. The length of a year is 365.2422 days, whatever calendar. Do not something. according to the Hebrew calendar. <laughs> right. And it's wrong. It, their calendar <laughs> okay, no, we're moving wrong. on. We're moving on. I no think it's, like, is it the cycle of the sun or around the earth, right? Or right. whatever you we're think. Right. On. Just we're hold on. on. We're going to move on from here, guys. All right. We still got a yeah. few super chats to go through. I, I said I was going to set one minute timers and then you guys were having such fun back and forth. So, I mean, I just kind of let her go sorry. a little bit. Sorry. Uh, no, sorry. I'm sorry. Say, Not this sorry, time. Ryan, I just got to say, Oh. I was going to say, I've got to put my generator off, so I'm going to black out for like two, three minutes quickly, okay? Oh, okay. I was okay. going to say, I thought you were going to add to the discussion, but yeah, if you got to drop out, that's yeah. no problem at all. Okay, okay. I was going to say, I'll be back we now. have to move on, but yeah, all right, we'll see you in a second. <laughs> yeah. That's no problem. All right, I misread that, guys. Don't mind me. All right, <laughs> I was like, nope, 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 we're going to move on. So uh, let's see if we can get some here for you, Ozzy and, and uh, Grace, and get these ones banged out of the park. How does... How doesn't it violate the second law of thermodynamics? Because the second law of thermodynamics is for an isolated system, which the Earth, Sun, Moon system is not isolated. It's so the second law does not apply to it. Just definitionally speaking, it doesn't apply. But when we actually look at like the atmospheric pressure as you increase in altitude, what you actually observe in real life is it gets lower and lower and lower, trending closer and closer to zero. So by the time you're getting out to deep space, it's not like you ever have an instant where you have this dense atmosphere next to a vacuum, right? It's a gradual decrease asymptotically approaching zero pressure. All right, Ozian, okay. any thoughts? I just kind of, a vacuum isn't considered zero pressure either. A vacuum is below a certain Tor value. That's why I said asymptotically approaching zero. Thanks. All right. Um, I, I, I would like to mention just something on the second law of thermodynamics. It's absolute proof that there is a creator and that there was a beginning because nope, uh, not. no, nothingness did not produce high precision everything. Yet according to right. the second law of thermodynamics, everything is winding down. Right. It must I don't have believe been that either. Up. Ten seconds. We have no energy left if the universe was eternal. I don't believe there was ever nothing. So to that. Good. Let me just respond to that really quick. Yeah. Oh so, boy. <laughs> Let's get yeah. down a different route. Just saying, like it, <laughs> you there guys. are cosmological models that have periods of non-metric time. So again, not nothing is necessitated. That no, no Big Bang, no cosmological model currently states that the universe came out of nothing. That's a total straw man, not part of the theory. So yeah, he's wrong on all fronts. Yeah. Everything has a beginning. Nope. No. Oh, nope. oh, special help. pleading then. There's actually nothing well, in all the, of physics. The reality is evidence of there being a creator because everything oh. is winding down. No, according there's to the actually, law of thermodynamics. 
There's actually no. nothing in all of physics that necessitates that the universe had to have a beginning. There's no empirical support for that either. So you're incorrect. Yeah, it's the, and it's even the first with cause argument. Death, there has to be death, an argument. With nope, heat death, there's, there's you know, cause. with heat heat death, there's still time. So when the like when everything winds down, time still continues into the future infinitely. Not without. There's no it, end. It, 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 Okay. okay. Let's not be triggered. If I say X, let's not get triggered into a Glenn Miller I say Miller X created Y, I'm assuming the existence of X to explain the existence of Y. If I, I say X created X, I'm assuming the existence of right, X to explain the existence we'll of X. X, X causes Y. I nothing plus nothing that. equals nothing. Nothing plus it, God is everything. All right. One second, Ozean. One second. We're going to let Grayson respond this time. Please. Second law of thermodynamics. There is no metaphysical argument that there needs to be a first cause. Metaphysical foundationalism is only one of several all equally valid alternatives, such as infinitism or, co or coherentism, that oh, are viewed as being equally valid in the field of metaphysics. So you're no, just no. wrong. There has True. to be a beginning for everything. Well, wait, wait common sense. and first law of thermodynamics says that energy and matter can neither be created or destroyed. So you ignore the first law in favor of the second law. So if you go by the first law, nothing began. It's all always existed because it can't be created or destroyed with disputes God existing. If you want to use the laws of thermodynamics, God can't exist. The universe has always existed is basically an oh, infinite past. We're back, everybody. Say, which yes. violates the second law. Of no, it's a Griffin's trilemma. You either have infin infinitism, circularism, or foundation. You have like a uh, first cause. So there's three options. They're all equally. There has to be a first cause. They're all. Oh, they all have problems. Us. No, they don't. Every, there's no, three multiverse possible. and and all of your there's like hypotheticals here. I didn't mention multiverse, logical. did I? So I mentioned all of these hypotheticals and, um, are not look, logical. I, look, they're not mentioned... logically consistent. There has to be a to everything. They in fact are logically consistent. No logician will agree with Flat. you. One We're second, on second Dustin. You gotta let Grayson finish his point. He was just in the middle of a sentence again. There, it's all right, but it happens. But yeah. Just they are, in fact, not logically inconsistent. Even Christian apologists like William Lane Craig will fully admit that there are logically consistent metaphysical infinitisms. Uh, and again, nothing in physics shows us that the universe had to have had a beginning. I already explained to you why the second law doesn't, because there Ten couldn't seconds. totally be periods of non-metric time in your cosmological model. So there you go. Uh, according to the laws of thermodynamics, I forget which one, but basically, the uh, first one? All, all energy, although you can't destroy it, becomes more and more uh, unusable. First all, over time. Can't create it so either. it's all winding okay. down to nothingness or stillness, even if it's still there, even if it's still a rock, it's going to not be moving soon. That's basically what the. I don't laws think of you're understanding what I'm saying. I don't think which, you're Which means I'm infinite myself. time is not possible. Deep time no, is not possible. It doesn't. There's an expiration date. You oh. can have non metric time. I don't think you're understanding that. Can uh, I. You can have time, and you can not measure time, or you can measure time. I guess if that's what you mean by metric, but no, time is time, not. and it has been consistent since the beginning. Second of time. law of thermodynamics doesn't disprove an infinite future. Uh, it it disproves an infinite past and an infinite future. It does everything it is winding dis down. Definitely doesn't it does. dispute an infinite future. There's a future. beginning and an end. A beginning and an end. And you a can't creator. prove that. Yes, you can. It's logically yes, consistent. Yes, you can. Uh, it's the only so, logically oh, consistent you, cosmological you standpoint. The first you, know, law is true. you know, you accept the first law is true. Do you accept Do you know the first of the law of thermodynamics is true? Do you know the ontological primitives? Ask, answer his question. Yeah, logic. Uh... Uh, flat needs a turn to. I exist. Okay. Uh, reality exists. Answer, answer the question. Do you okay. accept the first law of thermodynamics? I accept all the laws of thermodynamics. It's a so natural law. Accept that energy cannot be created. Naturally. God oh, okay. is supernatural. Okay. Okay, now let's put it this way. Do we exist? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I exist. Are we natural? Reality when exists. Are we natural? Logic yes. is true. This I is what I'm asking. Do you know what the ontological primitives are? I exist. Reality exists. Yeah, like Logic is true. Okay. Is true. Either we were created or we created ourselves. No. Nope. Nope. Yes. No. Which one disagrees with the first law? It's a false premise. No, no nothing has to be not. created. Those are the only two. Nope. That's what's there's called a the third ontological op, there's primitives. A third, there's only two logical right. observations. Nope. There's a third false dichotomy. Option. Well, can I have it's not a seconds? false dichotomy. It is. No. If you go no. to a beach and you see a beautiful built um, sand castle, do you logically deduce someone made that sand castle or did it create itself? Because I have empirical evidence of other people making sand castles. Ah, so it could have created it. Form, it formed naturally. 
No, it formed naturally right, well, from pre-existing and material. And material can't be created or destroyed in my model. Okay, so right, the, can I go? Energy. Yeah, over to you, Dustin. Energy and matter and heat. Over whatever, to Dustin. Can't be created or destroyed. It can only change just, states. Just one, one uh, change between. One moment. So the first cause or law of cause and effect, basically, uh, I said it earlier, but this is a different way of putting it. If A, there are things which come into existence, such as mm -hmm. the universe alongside time, matter, and space, and B, which means everything which comes into existence is caused to exist by something else, then C, there cannot be an infinite series of past causes. Therefore, D, there exists a first transcendent cause, which did not come into existence. In other words, the first cause always existed. Hence, E, nothingness, did not produce high precision everything. Yet, according to the second law of thermodynamics, like I said, well, we everything is winding today. down. I, my turn. Just a minute. And also, so F, without God, we would have to believe that pure nothingness, void, produced chaos, which then, against all the scientific laws we have, produced complexity and precision order everything which is totally illogical so do i so do i which get an hour to right. unpack yeah, which that and, of entropy. Right. do i get an hour to unpack all right one second flat so we gotta let ozzy in respond do i get here. an hour to unpack to move that on, and refute yeah, it all and, and and say why i disagree with every single one of your premises do i get an hour ryan do i got an hour to re um <laughs> just... debunk his argument that you just oh, okay made? now you're just being funny all right let's I'm move i'm not being funny like all right. Like I'm, I'm not being funny. All examples of causation we have are physical. Boom, physicalism's true. Can, can we have a relevant. debate? Can we set up a debate on this subject? Because I, I would, would love, love that. I, I have no problem with doing that. Uh, but let's carry on, guys. Uh, let's try to keep it in on moon landing hoax. Uh, we have the whole India moon landing thing. We got 1969. There's lots of stuff to talk about right now, right here. So let's try to keep it in uh, in step, guys. Uh, like I said, hit the like button, everybody, if you're watching right now and you haven't already. You lazy thumbed ma. Anyways, uh, let's see. Uh, Megalyn says. It was impossible to fake the moon landing pics with the technology available at the time. As for you, uh, uh, Kubrick would disagree with you. Star Trek was doing it pretty well even then. Y'all are a joke, man. Tell me again. In tell fact, me again Star Trek why and Kubrick Star Wars are far more NASA. convincing. Tell me far again why Kubrick was called NASA, yeah. I can't even understand what you're saying, Flat, so I'd repeat yourself. Kubrick, you know who Kubrick is. Yeah, Stanley Kubrick. One, actually, my favorite director of all time. And he's known for what exactly? Great movies. Based Eyes wide movies. shut, no, which is special basically reality. Effects. Special effects. And um, why was he part of the moon landings? Uh, well, he was not part of the moon landings, actually. He was yes, he was. Him and Disney. Disney. Him and Walt well, Disney. He was not. All right, you moon asked moon a question. You got to be fair. You asked a question, Seriously, Grayson. You can't we just this. ask me a question and then okay. immediately start talking. All right, about we, already, we already solved right. that. Go ahead, Grayson. Okay. So, Stanley Kubrick was consulting with NASA for his movie, 2001 A Space Odyssey, that came out before the moon landings. All right? And again... You think like, so he was practicing. No, 2001 doesn't look similar to the footage from the moon landing. They don't look similar. 2001 is better than the moon landings. No, it's not. So if they were going to fake it, why would they not make it look like it was on? Or I mean, they just come on. Right. It Did looks so fake, it has to be real. Oh, it's Elon Musk. Oh, good quote. Your position is not rational at all. If Stanley Kubrick was really brought in to fake the moon landing, guess what? He wouldn't have put out 2001 at all. All right. He was he he was a um how can I put it? He had a tendency to be very particular. He had an yeah, OCD. That's with true. Particularity. Okay. So and you they just... brought him in to fake the moon landing oh. for a particular way. He got no why evidence. It's done that. a so, certain way. So camera... the effects he's done in 2001 share the same similarities oh i don't all right cameras with optics can't create like as detailed <laughs> images as cgi does either next like, you're dealing with wow. different things yeah we're so, talking all right on. we're getting on the cameras again so let's move on because we we have discussed this i think uh so yeah let's gear let's carry on as you can hear i'm about to say uh as i'm trying to read through them make sure that we got ones that are substantive question for dustin and flatzoid from kango 44 thank you for putting in an appropriate uh, question there congo uh so question for dustin and flatzoid how do you hold your science denialism position whilst on a video call on the internet 
it's technology. It's not science. I nice way to say that what science is. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Just sorry. Just, just want to say it. He doesn't know what science is. It's not science denial. Technology is not science. You get no. technology based on scientific evidence, but it's not science. And and also, um, you know, the scientific method is something that I think we both, Flatzoid and I both have a great appreciation of. Um, but what they call science is basically just like what they call news. And it's all fake. In fact, fake news is less funded by governments than fake science, which is around 95%. If you want to get ahead in this world, it's evolution, it's climate change, it's uh, the jabs from Edom, uh, Edom, and it's all this gravity and, and cosmological lies. Um, that's basically uh, the the way to get ahead in science. Yeah, we know your worldview. You, Let's go to the next like question. Like making more racist comments. Anyways, did, Edom means did, them. Did I miss something? It's in the end time, uh, Book of Revelations, prophecies, end times, the Gog and Magog war, uh, how they take over our nations and basically. Brian, let's go to the next right, question. Well, okay. Get to the JQ. He's not bringing any racist remarks. I don't know why I keep bringing up racism. I did say That's I would. What they always well, do. I, I did they say I would boot it. anybody if they brought up any other uh, things. So let's just try to be careful because, like I said, I don't know Bible. Yeah. everything. But yeah, let's just carry on. Um, LJ Maroon, nineteen sixty nine film had HD quality and tech. The Apollo eleven Freemasons who set up the first fake mooning scenery actually copied this movie a bit. Google it. I'm a, um, I'm yeah, interested decoration, in the stupid, stupid, stupid. You know, thank you for the super chat. Do your own research. <laughs> It'll make James more money. Good. Next. Bible says test all things. Hold fast yeah. that which is true. Or do your own research. <laughs> if you tested the flat earth, you'd debunk it, bro. If you tested the Bible, you'd debunk it. I did. I was, an atheist. I was a lifelong atheist until I tested it. Well, then you failed your test, buddy. I don't know what else to tell you. We all fight right. against principalities of darkness. Our, you guys are all yeah. lively and having fun. All right, let's carry on. Uh, do, 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 free Free Palestine said Flat Earthers won the debate, the globe death. So that's a compliment. Uh, thank you for that, Free Free Palestine. Uh, Truth Seeker said, all you have is math and models. Uh, this is a quotation, sorry. It says, all you have is math and models. To you, Dustin, as opposed to what else? Bible. scientific evidence and the scientific method which is demonstrable repeatable and debunkable okay let's carry on guys uh, i think that was uh, short and sweet uh alex says thoughts on uh alden's atmospheric theory you guys yeah know the alden is? thing is just made up they're just trying to troll us oh okay you... there's no such thing as alden's atmosphere theory do you guys yeah Anybody else know anything? I don't know anything about that subject. I'll have to look it up. It's a troll comment. They just say, "Do you know about Alden's number or Alden's theorem?" And it it doesn't mean anything. They're just trying to see if you get us to agree with it. Is that isn't that from um, uh, is that that thing from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? No, no, it's just Vosh's fan base that does that. Damn. Okay, I was gonna say there is a thing from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy that is. supposed to be uh, in that same vein uh free free palestine says a sun and moon do not rise nor set they only appear from within the vanishing point and disappear into the vanishing point as they perform the uh, analema i don't know if i said analema. That. <laughs> okay i probably analema. put a little too much uh, grossness on that word anyways go ahead guys <laughs> yeah so absolutely nothing in perspective provides for the bottom up obstruction of the sun as it sets so perspective cannot help you angular resolution cannot help you there is no workable rescue device on flat earth that is capable of explaining the sunset flat so we tried to do it last time he failed i can easily show demonstrated i demonstrated for him it just says nah -uh." that's no you didn't guys demonstrations are nah -uh. okay so because your demonstration had an object that was taller than the observer's height it failed as a demonstration. Now, if you can repeat that demonstration with ob- obstructing the sun with an object that is shorter than the observer's height, then I will accept oh. it as a demonstration. But Who only is until sharing now. Oh my goodness, we have another. He's, share. Just, he's just sharing Legos, man. Why are it's we? It's what him... you guys are talking about right here. I'm, I'm showing you the sunset. Sun setting. If you want, right. me, I'll speed it mm. up. In fact, we got go up to four x. It's weird how we can demonstrate these things. I, got I do minutes. declare this is yeah. the last screen Some share, people don't like it. <laughs> Come on, let's... guys. I'm sorry. I, I came prepared. I got brought notes. What should I say? Damn, stole me. 
Bro, none of what you've shared has been relevant at all. This is a sunset. Oh, yes, You're talking has. about sunsets, man. What are you talking about? I don't disagree with sunsets. Nice I'm curve. Saying. I see a curve. Nice. A rising no curve. curve I see a curve? rising curve. What are you talking about? It's obvious. Where do you see a curve? What no. curve? I see a, a curve. Well, you, I did, no one can Where? see me with my fingers because Where? some of the screen share. It's, it's a straight line right the there. Just you. Sorry, sorry. I was in. What at what altitude are you supposed to see right, curve on your the globe? Share. Do, do you um, have I think fish the eye lens contacts? We can see it is thirty thousand feet. We can see no. it. Yep. Do you have fish eye lens contacts? Tyson Even at two hundred and twenty thousand feet, thanks to Felix Baumgartner, we see no. This curve, is mate. not a flat Earth debate. When MythBusters tried to debunk flat Earth, they used a fish eye lens, which was the same curve this at is ground not level a flat Earth as it. Debate. At altitude, it's the same curve at ground level. The curve it ground at ground a level. Flat Earth they debate. cheat. Actually, it is a flat Earth debate. You can In see fact, a it is, forward curve. Nobody cares about moon landing anymore. You can see man. a forward curve at 200 feet. I proved that too. Ryan, you, no, just you showed perspective. Off on on oh. Literally, perspective. It's the foundation it's of your so-called science. It's all related. You just can't like it. That's feet. why you were against you gravity. You wanted me to not talk about gravity before. You guys are afraid of these things. are moving down. I will have a debate with you on flat Earth or gravity. The thing is, is that that is not this debate. You heard it, James. It is part of this debate. It's context. That's Ryan. <laughs> okay, James my name is Ryan, but it does yeah. say uh, James on the oh, Zoom, so you, you get a pass. It's fine. <laughs> okay, it's fine. Ryan, yeah. my apologies. I'm, I'm new to you guys. And I, I, by the <laughs> way, okay. thanks for hosting this. I appreciate everybody coming. No, it's all good. But, uh, um, but yeah, no. Let's try to get the last couple questions out here, guys. So uh, thank you, everybody, in our live chat for coming and hanging out and enjoying the discussion. Uh, definitely uh, hit the like button. Uh, share this out in those spaces you like to have these discussions. Uh, but in the meantime, we are going to wrap up our last three questions. I'm going, only going to read the last three questions. Uh, so if you got any other uh, you super chats, uh, just save them, everybody, because we are going to close out after these, because I do think uh, our guests are ready to peace out. So Billy Philly says, no boot has ever been set on the moon. Why would we see the site? See, I put my parental filter on there. You must miss the debate. All right. Uh, what was the what was the question part of that? No boots. No, no boot has been set on the moon. I think is what he said. There was a second line though. Yeah, but he was saying if no boot has been set on the moon, then why can we see the site where it has? Oh, he said we would see oh, it. Okay. Is what they were. We saying. would see it. You don't see it because it's too far away. The op the angular resolution is too small okay. for our mm, optics so like the on the Earth. NASA claims to see it. But All right, we're banging lying. these ones out, guys. All right, you so see, Truth like, Seeker. The overall sight, sort of. Like, All right. no, note how these same people are able to see trillions of miles away. Fine, it? you got to assert yourself, man. <laughs> assert myself. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll have to bring out that rock voice, you know. Every once in a while, I, it, it, the way I look at it, though, is the more chill I remain during debate as a host when the day comes where somebody really irks me, everyone's going to be like, oh, you, you PO'd Ryan. You must have messed up. That's 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 how I look at it. I, I hope that's how it'll go when eventually I do eventually can... lose my mind. But anyways, Truth Seeker says, what specific evidence convinced you the Bible is true? You said you were an atheist. Were you ever a skeptic for I, Dustin? I, I, can you um, re-ask that question? I zoned out of for a second because I have satellite internet, so I missed it. That's all right. Uh, Truth Seeker asked, what specific evidence convinced you the Bible is true? You said you were an atheist. Were you ever a skeptic? So I was a lifelong devout anti-theist who debated pastors and people come to my door. I would debate them. I never lost those debates. I convinced many people to abandon their faith, uh, I'm ashamed to say. But when I went down every other rabbit hole and I told my audience that flat earth stuff is stupid, it's a distraction. I'm focused on real issues like human trafficking and, and like fake uh, elections and fake medicines and such uh, people dying real issues not this fake flat earth stuff i didn't care about it when i looked into it to debunk it i accepted it within six hours and then never since then i knew there was a creator and i was no longer an atheist and it took me very little time to figure out which creator had a book full of prophecies and miracles which test 100 percent true all right um uh, anybody else have any thoughts uh quick thoughts before we move to the last one Nope. Well, I was never an atheist, but as a Bible-believing Christian most of my life, I was a globe believer. And uh, when you actually look into the word more deeply, you see it definitely doesn't teach a heliocentric moral as it goes against God's character. Okay. Uh, 
So nominal coming in with the last okay. question. Thank you so much, everybody, for your questions. Just, just really quick, really quick. I looked seconds, through man. all. I've looked through all this evidence too, and it never was convincing to me. Maybe I'm just more of a skeptic. I don't know. This isn't going to be really quick, is it? Uh, no, let's let's try to move so, on. I'm done. Sorry. We, you're trying to open up another can of worms. You no. behave yourself, mister. I, I'm on to you. Nominal says, mister, I need an hour to respond. Uh, it, and then tries to that open up one? a can yes. of worms. You, calm down. All right. <laughs> it's fine. 85% of dark matter, this question from Nominal, 85% of dark matter follows the scientific method 95% of the time. It's true scientific facts. 85% of dark matter follows the scientific matter 95% of the time. I don't, I, I don't think this is a serious question. I'm sorry. It's that's, just, uh, that's <laughs> sarcasm, guys. It's, it's yeah. funny, though. Uh, PhD Phony did put in another question, so we'll ask that one. I did say we're going to cap it off, but if we got one more question that's serious, let's do it. Does it annoy you that Flat Earth has no answers? This is a Flat Earth question. What are you doing? But let's ask it anyways. So uh, Flat Earth has no answers. Uh Let's take one minute, guys. Uh, what do you I, mean, no answers? I have no. I think, we've answered, yeah. right, I think no, we've answered everything. Yeah. All right. I think we've answered everything they've asked. Let's I ignore no that. Then. Left, let's frankly. ignore that then. Send, so we have Wade Remington coming in. I'm going to remind all of you: stop it with the super chats. Uh, but I did want one that was a little like one last one of substance before we like close out for the night and do exit statements. Wade Remington, thank you so much. Why would Buzz Aldrin say on camera that? We never went. You he first, Mason. Yeah, he was pissed off because some guy kept putting a camera right in front of his face and he was a conspiracy theorist that he didn't want to deal with. So he gave him a sarcastic answer. I mean, you he also he said it to another he, girl. He said it he to never another actually girl sitting said on stage. It either. <laughs> and uh, and he, then he said, what was it, mic drop or something like that? Right, no, question. he said circuit breaker. After he said it, like, what, boom. Question like, he just said something. this many times. He said this on Circuit the stage. Breaker. He said it to a little girl. He said it to uh, different people. All right. Question and for, now they're calling him C now. This is for Ozian and Grayson. So, Ozian, you had a thought there, and we'll try to let you get that out there before we hand it back over to you. No, that's, he didn't specifically say that, but that's uh, fine. Yeah, I'd like to just say the final thought here because Buzz Aldrin has gone on record numerous times saying that it does happen, and you guys call him a liar, but then – if he makes a joke and says sarcastically that we didn't, then all of a sudden you guys, oh, look, now he's telling the truth. He was lying all those other times. But now that he's agreeing with me sarcastically, that must be the truth. Ha ha. It's, con um, it's confirmation bias. If he were a murderer, that would get him arrested and imprisoned. Yeah, no duh. Why? Because he just basically contradicted his own testimony. That's and not he violated something. In that's fact, not what testimony. He's, what he's done is worse than murder. You understand what testimony is? Testimony yes, is his public statements. That's no, that's his not testimony. No, that is his testimony. Sarcasm is not testimony, dude. It's, you're not trying to make a truth claim. You're the one saying sarcastic. sarcasm. He said circuit breaker, cliff, you know, mic drop type statement. You're the one saying it's sarcasm. I don't you're the one saying it's testimony when it wasn't it a, a public in statement a, numerous times uh, made is testimony. Yeah, Absolutely. No. I've got a question though. How are you able to divine if it's his thoughts, if it's a uh, sarcastic or not oh gee flat soid how oh how do we know that somebody's being sarcastic when they talk to you he, tells oh, you. he didn't talk that way by the way uh, he didn't uh, there was no sarcasm in his voice all right it was it, conan o'brien a, a comedy show that's not testimony dude all right well we're gonna if do he's talking to a little girl is he being sarcastic to a I'd little girl i have to girl? see the specific quote because you guys take this shit out of context all the time but I say we, I have to leave. You know, yeah. You know. I think uh, what we should do is we'll do uh, a one minute uh, closings for each individual. So uh, we usually keep it to one side of the panel for the closing, but I, I feel like let's bounce it this evening because it, it, that would be fun. Uh, so, Flatsoy, do you mind going first where you went first in the intro? Thank you so much, buddy. Awesome. One minute for you. Thanks. Yeah. Just by the way, I just saw the sunrise now because I woke up at 2 a.m. for this debate. Uh, so thanks, guys, for the It was fun. Thank you. But note this whole debate, they have not been able to do anything to demonstrate gas pressure without containment. All they did was place things in Narnia without actually demonstrating it first to exist and say, no, -uh, you don't understand when we ask them specific questions. Note also, we have practically the whole night explained the different ventures of why it's fake. 
even based on why they are liars. And if you're honest about yourself, you look at this and say, yeah, maybe the moon landings are fake. All right. Uh, so we'll hand it over to you, Grayson. Oh, one minute on the floor and it's all yours. Okay, yeah, so not only did we do all of what Flatsoid said we didn't do, but they provided no evidence. We provided, I, at least in my intro, and I tried to get them to address it throughout, independent third-party measurements from both amateurs and scientists alike. I, again, the lunar retro reflector shut down this whole thing. They had no response to it. They just said, no, uh we showed lots of examples of where gravity acts as the containment for gas pressure. There's over 5,000 exoplanets. Most of them have atmospheres that are readily observable with spectroscopy. So again, he's totally full of it. He doesn't even understand that the second law only applies to isolated systems. This is basic 101 level stuff, which he would know if he had ever taken a class in anything that he talks about. And just so you know, the links are not down below for our channels. So go ahead and Google or search on YouTube based theory if you want to check out any of my other debates on my channel. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, feel free to uh, let everybody know where you're hanging out in your closing statement. Uh, Dustin, one minute on the floor. Hey, sure. I'm Dustin Nemos, archivist at theserapayum.com and host of The Silent War at nemosnewsnetwork.com. And there's now clear evidence of NASA using numerous methods to mislead the public about astronauts being on the ISS and other space missions. Air bubbles, wires, harnesses, green screens, virtual reality, strings, gravity, grabbing objects that are not even there, etc., including near drowning incidents, numerous. Space is the satanic secret society deception filmed in a Hollywood basement. The Elite are ruled by a cult that worships the demigod Nephilim Anunnaki lineage of the fallen angels of Genesis 6 and they have created entire branches of false science around the Copernican revolution, the now thoroughly debunked theory that the world moves around the sun, which is why we are really here. In order to convince us the world is a globular rock cannonball corkscrewing amidst infinite void with other infinite globular rocks shotgun blasting behind it, a rock that is billions of years old, etc. You guys can see the rest at theserapayam.com. All right, Ozzy, and last statement uh, for you, closing uh, one minute. I just want to point out really quick in his closing there, he made three claims that weren't brought up during the debate that could have been refuted then, but I don't have time to refute them now about bubbles and all that type of stuff. Anyway, so we had, we provided a wealth of evidence. We, we explained there was historical record. To deny that we went to the moon would take, a, you'd have to, incredul incredulity required is astronomical. Their, their only explanation for why we didn't go to the moon is a misunderstanding of the second law of thermodynamics and Satan did it. He created this grand, great conspiracy to hide God. That's their argument. Or you can accept the historical record, the physics, the history, the documentation, and the testimony of our veterans that went to the moon. And that's it. Oh, yeah. We're having an after show at Matters now. Please come watch it.